he is back and he comes into this game with outstanding credentials as usual. I mean he is 103 for 133 in passing 1262 yards and 12 touchdowns and a 71 percent completion percentage or rate. So he comes in today and he seems to be 100 percent. The same cannot be said for Idaho especially Deontay Jackson. Jackson with that high ankle spring. Also returning to the lineup for Idaho is Brian Flowers. He had a hamstring just returning to action today. Hawaii will kick off. It is indoors. Temperature about 71 and controlled. Brand new field turf here on the University of Idaho campus. Even their outdoor practice field is field turf. And we're underway. Here's Dan Kelly kicking off. Ball is returned by Dewey Hale. Hale breaking tackles gets out over the 35 all the way to the 37 yard line. Dewey Hale a freshman out of Paris Texas 10th in whack kickoff returns with a 20 yard average. He had a good one there. So it will be first down for Idaho. Their quarterback is Nathan Enderley. He is fifth in whack passing. He is a redshirt freshman, 46% passing completion rate. He has thrown for six touchdowns and seven interceptions on the year. Single setback is Jason Byrd. Three wide receivers, first down on the 37. Quick pass, and that is thrown low and away from Maurice Shaw. Here are the starters for Idaho. The offensive line, Anderson, Iupati, Corby, Jarostovic, Bates, and uh, Bjorvik is uh, one of the uh, receivers along with Smith, Komar, and Williams. Also, Jackson is penciled in there, but he has not appeared and will not appear, I think, in the lineup. Iopate is a very good offensive lineman. There you see Enderley, second down and 10 from the 37. Enderley gives the ball to Bird, and Bird is hit immediately by Adam Leonard. Glances off Leonard, gets over the 40 to the 41 yard line. Defensive starters for Hawaii. This is the way they will look in the line on the linebackers and the defensive backs. Purcell, Laele, Lafaele, and also Noah. Then the linebackers, Leonard, Ilamimian, and Kalilimoku. And the defensive backs, Lewis, Monte, Patek, and Newberry. Again, it is to Bird. Gets away from one tackle, trying to turn the corner. Can't do it. Run out of bounds on the far side. So Bird coming into the game and started in place of Deontay Jackson. We mentioned that Jackson tried to go but couldn't. So it will bring up fourth down. Coming in to punt is T.J. Connolly, fifth in the whack. He has punted 24 times for a 40.6 yard average and his longest punt is 56 yards. Backing up for Hawaii is Devon Bess. Good snap. No wind of course. Bess saying he doesn't want anything to do with that. And it bounces at the 10, inside the 10, all the way to the 8, perhaps to the 7. Hawaii will start deep in their own territory. Isaac Butts carry, uh, covered on the play, finally downing the ball inside the 10-yard line. Nice punt there by T.J. Conley, getting it inside the 10-yard line. So now Hawaii will start and trotting out for the first time in two weeks is Colt Brennan. Brennan has 105 yards, rather 105 touchdowns in his career. That is fifth on the all-time list. First down. And the ball is just inside the eight-yard line for Hawaii. From the shotgun, Brennan lays it off on the outside to Bess. He's covered immediately. No gain on the play. In fact, he lost back inside the five-yard line. David Vobora. Vobora, first team all whack out of Eugene, Oregon. Led the whack in total tackles last year and leads the whack in solo tackles this year. Number 40. There you see the lineup for Hawaii. Asun Satelli Estes, Sawafea, 
Steinoff, then Rivers, Best, Grice Mullins, Hawthorne getting the start again today. And you have uh, Jackson. Wright Jackson also in the backfield. Second down and 11. Again, Best to the other side. This time he gets a block, gets out over the 10, maybe to the 12. And that'll bring up third down long yardage. Taylor Russ there to make the tackle. For Idaho, Sekona Musika Rust in that uh, defensive front. Alexander Ogletree, Ratty, and Vibora. And then William Shiloh, Smith, and Franks. Franks is an outstanding player on the corner. Musika and Vibora leading in tackles. Big third down play for Hawaii. Third down and four. Malcolm Lane's in there instead of Jason Rivers, who did not start the game. Hawthorne comes out to the near side. In motion goes Bess. So the first test for Hawaii on third down. With time. Throws over the middle. And that could be interference. And it is interference. They had a hold of Best at the 15-yard line. He was all over him. That was an easy call to make. The crowd, even though it's only about 10,000 people so far, they're really trying to get into this game and create some noise. So far, it has not disrupted the Warriors. The penalty is enforced at the spot of the foul and an automatic first down. Shiloh Kale is called for the interference. That will be a first down for Hawaii, and that moves the ball to the 24-yard line. Malcolm Lane to the far side, Hawthorne to the near side. They come out in four wides. The slots are on the wings. First down. Again, looking. Throw sideline pattern. That is complete to Grice Mullen, and they roll him up. And Mullen is not getting up. That's, the, that's like the injury he suffered at Boise State last year. Kale hit him low. And Grice Mullen now concerned for Grice Mullen. That same kind of injury that he had last year. And you could see that he was just rolled up from behind. And that hit him, you know, in that knee. And right away he grabs it. Looks like he's in pain. Yes. This could be a serious injury. You're looking at uh, Rob Akey in his first year coming over from uh, Washington State University, where the, he was defensive coordinator. Concern for Grice Mullins. Jorge. Yeah. What's going on with your hat, man? What's wrong with my hat, man? I mean, it doesn't look like a ball player's hat. I mean, it looks all brand new. You know? Just come out of the box. <laughs> I'm a catcher, man. I, I never had to wear that thing. You gotta bring this thing in. Hey, Wally. Wally. Hey, it's not what you think. Good news for Grice Mullins. He got to his feet and is standing on the sideline. First down for Hawaii on the 41 yard line. In motion is Aaron Bain. They overload the left side with three receivers. Looking left, now throwing over the middle and throwing slightly behind Bain is a Brennan. And Brain, a Bain could not gather that ball in. That'll bring up second down and 10. The Vandals playing a 3-4 front, walking outside linebacker up on the line of scrimmage so they can give you a, a, a true 3-4 front or they can give you a 4-3 look. Basically, basic seven-man front. So Hawaii lines up again, three wide receivers to the left. Bryce Mullins has gone back into the game. Low snap. Brennan looking left. Throws as he's hit. That's complete to best. Over midfield, escapes one tackler and goes out of the 42-yard line. Brilliant throw that time by Brennan. Because Joartis Raddy, I believe, was coming in on him. And Raddy really lowered the boom. But he got rid of the ball just as he was about to be hit by Ratty. You can see him go down, but that ball right on target to Bess. Well, the Warrior offensive line is giving Brennan good time. They're showing a lot of respect for Musika, the nose tackle. They doubled up on him that time. He's a very good nose tackle at 6'1", 293. Lane and Hawthorne are the wide receivers. Farmer, the running back. In the slot to the right. Bess 
And Grice Mullins. Bremen, quick pass. That is complete to Hawthorne. Looking for running room. Trying to get outside. He's at the 35 and spun out of bounds near the first down marker. Stanley Franks chased him all the way. Well, that mean, that shows you right there. Practice makes perfect. The first few times C.J. Hawthorne ran that jailbreak screen, he ran too much toward down the line of scrimmage and not into the backfield. And he did a nice job that time getting a little bit upfield, letting his blockers get in front of him. That's a much better job by C.J. Hawthorne on that screen. First down, the ball just outside the 31-yard line of Idaho in the first quarter, 11.28 left. Brennan with Polaris in the backfield. Pump fakes, now throws over the middle. That is complete, and that is complete to Bess. And Bess breaking away from Shiloh Kale for extra yardage, gets the ball down inside the 15-yard line. Well, the Vandals right there were in a two-deep zone. Uh, two safeties playing deep and the corners playing in the flats. And when you give Colt Brennan five seconds to throw the ball, what happens is a Warrior wide receiver will run the safeties off deep and allow someone to come into the middle zone right there and make the catch. And as you see, as we've said before, Grice Mullins back in that lineup. He's flanked to the left along with Bess. And this is where the yards get tough. The ball is on the 12-yard line of Idaho. Brennan with it. The opening march of this game. Hawaii started deep in their own territory. Brennan gives the ball to Polaris. He is hit immediately by number 91. That's Siua Musika out of Milpitas, California. 6'1", 193 pounds junior. He's a player, Jim. That's going to be an interesting game inside a game today, watching how John Estes does against Siwa Musika. And there you see Musika fighting off the block and getting to Polaris. Loss on the play of the yard, second down and 11. So Malcolm Lane gets repositioned on the left side. Ball is thrown and almost intercepted. Lane did not turn around in time. And he gets chastised a bit by uh, Brennan as they come back to the, uh, to the huddle. Stanley Franks was covering on the play for Idaho. That brings up a big third down play. Well, you know, Jim, Malcolm Lane always played the white right receiver all the way until last week when Jason had that uh, lower back injury. So this is the second time he's played on that left side. Certainly needs to make an adjustment. Another big third down play. This deep in Idaho territory. Polaris in the backfield along with Brennan. They overload the right side this time. Three wide receivers. Brennan looking. Checks off. Throws into the end zone. Touchdown! Grice Mullins. That quintessentially is the way Brennan plays the game of football. For Grice Mullins, that was his 28th catch, his fifth touchdown reception. Just a nice job getting between the two safeties there for the touchdown. For Brennan, that was his 13th touchdown throw of the season, his 106th in his career. Ty Detmer, by the way, holds the record for a career touchdowns, 121. Brennan is marching up the ladder. Well, that's got to be a real confidence builder for Colt Brennan taking the team down the field. Central Pacific Bank sponsors the Loyalty Award by donating $100 toward the Central Pacific Bank Endowed Scholarship Fund for every touchdown Hawaii scores. Central Pacific Bank, member of the FDIC, fiercely loyal banking. Hawaii will kick off. 93-yard drive to open this game. Kicking off is Dan Kelly. And the ball will be returned by Dewey Hale. Hale with a good return his first time. Second time, he swallowed up. May have fumbled the ball, but they say no. I think he ball lost his down. forward progress. Yeah. So it will be first down for Idaho. Well, the Vandals need to put something together here. Otherwise, they stand a chance of the Warriors putting this one further and further away. 
Still early yet, my friend. Still early. Huh? Yes, it is. <laughs> but the Warriors are very good. Idaho on their own 25 yard line. Single setback is Jason Bird. Set up a wing to the near side. The ball is given on a sweep to Bird with a pulling guard. And he gets upended as he crosses the 25 yard line. Good penetration that time by the Warrior defense. So Newberry was in on that play. Newberry, who plays in the defensive secondary, the right corner, came flying up from the corner, helping out, stuffing the sweep. Gain on the play from the 25 to the 27, second and eight. Enderley fakes the handoff. Now he rolls. He throws. That's complete in the crossing pattern. Nice job by Bjorvik coming across the field, picking up that drag pass. That's called a tight end drag. Take another look. Good fake that time. Excellent fake. And then the throw on that crossing pattern to Bjorvik. Bjorvik out of Prineville, Oregon. That's enough for a first down for Idaho. First down from the 40. Again, Bird, the single setback. Two wide receivers. Quick pass. They swing it out. And getting to the 45-yard line with a tackle by Patek is Steve Brown. Brown comes into this game with four receptions out, of course, was his fifth of the season. Nice quick ball control play by the Vandals, but a very nice job by Jacob Patek coming up and making the play right there. Five yard gain. Second down and five for Idaho. Maurice Shaw is flanked to the far side. Enderley, the quarterback. One thing about Enderley that the coaches like about him is his composure. Enderley turns, gives the ball. Big hole right up the middle. With it is Bird. Crosses midfield to the 49-yard line. Excellent blocking up front by that offensive line. Iopate and Corby. Corby, the team captain, playing in this 28th straight game. Six-yard game and a first down. Nice, nice little cut back there by Bird. Just sliding back on the inside away from where the hole was intended. Shaw and Steve Brown are flanked to the far side. Enderley fakes again, now throws. That is complete, settling in the zone. That's complete for a first down to Steve Brown. That was a very nice job by the Vandal offensive line, giving Enderley plenty of time to throw that ball. When you have four down linemen like the Warriors have, you need to put some pressure on the quarterback Somewhere within that four second mark. 15 right? yard. Nice job. Excuse me. 15 yard pickup and a first down for Idaho. And they are driving. Enderley rising up, audibleizing now. Two wide receivers to the near side. Greenwood along with Shaw. Shaw, great catch. He's hit by Patek. Glances off. Gets inside the 20 to about the 17 yard line. Maurice Shaw, his eighth reception of the year. He has two touchdowns from Enderley. So now Idaho is moving. Well, Coach Icky was talking about how Enderley is, has a lot of poise and he's really settling down and he's showing it right here on this second series. Doing a nice job picking out the open receivers, not panicking. Solomon Illumimian finally stopped him. Another first down for Idaho. They have the ball inside the 20, just short of the 18. In motion is Amancio. Rolling again, Enderley has running room. Enderley now throws. It is, let's see, no, comes out. There was a chance for an interception deep. Enderley throwing just about at the line of scrimmage. Myron Newberry had his hands on the ball, just couldn't hold on to it as he was rolling. There you see Coach Rob Aki. Aki has paid his dues before becoming a head coach. He was at Washington State as a defensive coordinator. Before that, defensive line coach. He's been many places. Second down 
and 10 from the 18. Ball is given on a sweep. With it. And into the end zone for the touchdown. That was sort of an end around, Jim. Trying to, trying to pick up the number. That's Williams. Yeah, there was a that was a fake up the middle and the end around. Old fashioned end around. Nice execution there by the Vandals. Eddie Williams, 6'1, sophomore from San Mateo, California, turned the corner, and all of a sudden there was an off ramp waiting for him. Or an on ramp, I should say. And he took it into the end zone. Amancio with the extra point. We are tied at seven. It's early, my friend. Well, they're playing well. Unbelievable. What's that? These athletes, some of the things they demand. Uh, who do these guys? Think? Idaho will kick off as they have tied this game with a drive of their own. And a brilliant end around run by Williams, Eddie Williams from San Mateo, California. Idaho goes eight plays, 75 yards, and the 18 yard touchdown run. So we are even. Kicking off is Vincente Rico, number 99 for Idaho. It will go to Washington. Michael Washington, two yards deep. Here he comes. Washington started to make the cut that would really have given big dividends, but he is uh, tackled by Brandon, let's see, Brandon Ogletree. Ogletree got him. Ogletree also playing on the uh, special teams. Bank of Hawaii recognizes excellence on a field of play. And tonight we'll be selecting a member from each team as the game's most valuable players, sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. Kealoha okay, uh, Polaris in the backfield along with Brennan. Triple wide receiver to the left, first down at the 28. Brennan with time throws, and Best gathers it in at the 38 yard line. That should be enough for a first down. So Hawaii starts a drive of their own and an excellent running of the pattern that time by Bess. It looks like the Vandals have adjusted and moved to a true four down lineman front probably trying to get some more pressure on Colt Brennan because you know if you give him time he will eat up the zone defense. Ten yard gain and a first down. First down for Hawaii. Polaris remains in the backfield along with Brennan. They overload the right side. First and 10 from the 38. Brennan throws. Slipping over there was Malcolm Lane. And as he tried to get up, the ball whizzed by him. Stanley Franks covering on the play. So that'll bring up second down and 10 for Hawaii. Six minutes, 30 seconds left to play in this first quarter. And Hawaii has ventured into Moscow, Idaho. And they have a game. So here come the Warriors. They come out in four wides. Brennan on second down. Brennan in trouble. Down he goes. Musica. See Uo Musica. Out of. Milpitas, California. That is his second sack of the season. Also in on that play, I believe Josh Shaw, who uh, was really one of the first players to get through and sort of disrupt the uh, offensive blocking pattern. Musica there to make the tackle. And credit the Idaho secondary. They closed off the pattern. Loss of four on that sack. Third down and 14. Hawaii's been able to convert on third down. Brennan. Looking. Now throws. That is intercepted. Intercepted by Brayon Williams. And Williams returns up the near sideline. So Utah starting to turn this play around, and Hawaii may be called for unsportsmanlike conduct. And we'll see. Both teams started shove and push at about the 40. 
Keith Asun may have been involved in that. So Idaho turns it around here with a turnover. A sack followed by an interception. That's only the second interception of the year thrown by Brennan. Excellent coverage on that play. Brennan tried to force it into triple coverage. And we'll see what the call is. Bill Athan is the official, whack official. Turning the return, block in the back on the intercepting team, number 21. That penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. After the ball was dead, personal fouls on both teams, number 65 and number five. Those penalties offset, first down. So the block in the back away gets... Nice break there. Yeah, gets a big break there. And uh, adds to it by having offsetting penalties on the personal foul. June Jones out talking to Nathan. There you see the interception by Brian Williams. First interception of the year. He's a junior out of Pasadena, California. So here's Idaho. We mentioned that Idaho has been in and has played the big boys, USC and Washington State, in the, in the Pac-10 conference. Aki, of course, knowing that if he wins this, this will be the biggest victory for Idaho. Ball is given on a sweep to the near side, looking and then really getting forced over as Brian Flowers. Excellent pursuit that time. Adam Leonard coming in to make sure. Looks like the Warrior defense got a little fired up there from the little fracas going on after the interception. Flowers coming back from a hamstring injury. He played only one game this season. Flowers last year rushed nine times for 37 yards in that 68 to 10 debacle at Aloha Stadium in the viewpoint of, um, of Idaho. Eddie Greenwood in motion and now Eddie Williams in motion. Back to pass. Andrew Lee throws as he's hit. The ball is intercepted and may be returned for a touchdown. Leonard with it. Leonard breaks a tackle at the 10. He scores. Jim, that play was caused by a blitz by Solomon Elimimium, forcing Enderley to get rid of the ball too quickly. Threw it right into Adam Leonard's hands. Adam scattered all the way into the end zone for a TD. Adam Leonard, another touchdown reception. Interception returned for a touchdown by Leonard. So Hawaii turns it around. Boy, we're on the seesaw here. Dan Kelly for the extra point. The crossbars are welded to the wall. No problem. Hawaii now leads 14 to 7 with 447 left to play in this game. And we just you just get you just get the impression we're just getting started here. Yep, and that's uh, Adam's got to be pretty happy about that. Uh, two interceptions for TDs in a row uh, last week against Charleston Southern, and now again today. And uh, Jim, you're absolutely right. It looks like there could be some points to those lights on the score, but maybe working overtime today. But credit the Hawaii defense. Hawaii scored upon, and then they came back to turn it around for Hawaii after Idaho had intercepted the pass following a sack of their own. And that's what good teams do, Jim. Good teams, they respond to something negative. They'll come back and make something positive happen. Good look at Adam Leonard. Dewey Hale is back. Boy, he's still filtering in players on their kickoff team. Kicking off will be Kelly. Devon Sturdivant is back there. Hawaii leads 14 to 7 and the volume on the excitement has just been turned up another notch. It will go to Dewey Hale on the goal line. Hale is hit and thrown down as he crosses the 20 yard line to about the 22. That reception and a touchdown return by Leonard was a 40 yarder. It will be first down for Idaho. 
Rust, Rustin Soli in there on the tackle there, Jim, on the kickoff team. Nice job. They uh, closed down all the running lanes. Really had nowhere to go. A smattering, a smattering of Hawaii fans here at the Kibbe Dome. Here comes Idaho. Shaw wide to the near side. Along with Steve Brown. Williams in motion. Ball is handed and with it. Let's see who carried that ball. That was Brian Flowers. Flowers showing a burst of speed. Got into the secondary. And then they finally diagnosed him. Adam Leonard in on the, the tackle. The I think junior also, out of Seattle. Also in that play with Solomon Elamimian. Uh, in middle linebacker uh, Warriors in their base 4 3 showing two deep zone playing their most basic defense they have Gain on the play of five ball is just short of the 30 yard line Eddie Williams who scored on an 18 yard end around earlier in motion ball is given again to flowers and flowers finds some opposition struggles and then gets belted. Short gain on that play. That will bring up third down for Idaho. So big third down play for Idaho. I think Laley was in the mix there on that last play. Away going to the nickel here, putting in an extra defensive back. That's correct. That's correct, Jim. From the shotgun, Enderly. Quick pattern. That is incomplete. Big hit by Kalili Moku. The ball was in, intended for Nick Conley, who is the brother of the punter. Nice play there by Brad Kalili Moku. I mean, right on that quick look in, he gets there right when the ball gets there, separates the ball from the player. Exactly what you're supposed to do as a linebacker. So in the punt is Conley, averaging over 40 yards. Enjoys kicking indoors. This one goes up. Waiting for it is Bess. Calling for the fair catch. Fumbles it. Gathers it in. Fumbles it again. And we may have. Let's see. We may have a, a possession. No, they're going to have Hawaii keep it. The crowd doesn't like that. That's a hard call. It looks like he's down and then the ball squirts out again. They say he was down. First down for Hawaii. Isaac Butts and Eric Hunter covering on the play for Idaho. He definitely fumbles it. I just don't know if he had control of it or not. I don't know if that's reviewable. 52 yard punt. Hawaii gets another break there. So Hawaii starts at their 17-yard line. First down. Colt Brennan. Four wide receivers. Hands the ball up the middle. Huge hole with it is Leon Wright Jackson. And Jackson burst out all the way to the 30-yard line. Or it could be Polaris. Let's see. It is Polaris. My, I, my mistake there. I beg, beg your pardon. Nice job by the offensive line maintaining their blocks getting position. Kayla reads the hole. Nice first down there. First down for Hawaii the ball just short of the 30. Polaris with a good run. Brennan again to Polaris. And Polaris out over the 35 to the 37 yard line. So Hawaii on two plays here in this drive going to the handoffs, to the running plays. A rarity. Now Wright Jackson comes into the game for Polaris. Second down and two for Hawaii. Lane. Flank to the left. See if Hawaii stays on the ground here. And they do. Good block. Trying to get to the outside is Wright Jackson. But they're able to string him out. 
And Jojo Dixon and David Vobora double team him. Jojo Dixon is from Wailuku on the island of Maui. Went to Baldwin. Dixon 6 1. He's only a freshman, 202 pounder. And Vobora, all everything for Idaho. That brings up third down and inches. Watch David Vobora is double teamed actually and breaks off the double team to help with the tackle. He's a very good player for Idaho. Number 40. Polaris under center this time. Polaris looking for the first down, has the first down. Angles off the left side, and he was able to probe the secondary. Vibora over on that side finally made the stop. But Hawaii converts on yet another third down. Unusual four running plays in a row. We don't usually see Hawaii do that. We haven't seen it so far this year unless they're running out the clock at the end of the game. But a big first down for the Warriors. Coming up on one minute left to play in the first quarter. Hawaii leading 14 to 7. Polaris still in the backfield along with Brennan. In motion is Bess. Quick pass. Rice, Greg Smullins surrounded by black jerseys. Gets away. Gets to midfield. And Grace Mullins. With it, that was a miraculous run. I mean, the, the, the light was fading quickly, <laughs> surrounded by the black jerseys, and somehow he got away. Brayon Williams finally made the tackle for Idaho. There was four vandals around him, and he still picks up uh, eight yards. How's that? Great job. Second down and two. Eight-yard pickup that time on that uh, short pass from Brennan to Grice Mullins. Mullins and Bess in the slot to the left. Hawthorne to the right. Malcolm Lane split far to the left. The throw is behind Bess, or excuse me, Grice Mullins. And Joardis Ratty covering on the play for Idaho. Well, that's the third time that Colts throwing the ball just a little bit behind the wide receiver. I wonder if that's just being out of the mix for a week, you know, not playing against Charleston Southern last week. Just off a little bit. Sure as he gets more and more reps, that'll go away. Jim Jones calling the play. Another third down. Hawaii has been perfect on third down conversions. Leon Wright Jackson has come in. From the shotgun. Pass. Complete the best first down. Best to the 45. And they cover him up at about the 44 yard line. David Vobora and Brayon Williams. Vobora is a name that you say constantly when you are describing the defensive play of Idaho. Well, to show what a special linebacker he is for the Vandals, they actually have him playing man to man often on one of the slot backs. And there has been no linebacker that I can call in the last two years, including teams like Oregon State and Purdue, that have been able to do that. But David is a very talented athlete. So Hawaii now with a fresh set of downs in Idaho territory on the 44. Wright Jackson in the backfield gets the handoff. And Wright Jackson folds it up as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Joe Joe Dixon there to make the tackle, his second tackle of this first quarter. And the first quarter has just gone into the books. Hawaii leading 14 to 7 from Moscow. Idaho. Things you love about football. Contact. Contact. Accuracy. Accuracy. Teamwork. Teamwork. You're a fan. You just don't know it yet. 
Watch MLS Primetime Thursday, Thursday nights on ESPN2. Presented by Adidas. How long has you been up there? I don't know. I think a while. ESPN Ultimate NASCAR. Own all four volumes on DVD now. The greatest drivers. There's the checkered flag for Allen. The fastest cars. The biggest moments. Get under the hood with these fully loaded DVDs. Experience life at 200 miles per hour. ESPN Ultimate NASCAR. Own all four volumes on DVD now. Husk, Huskers. No. Huskers with a, with a Z? No. Ooh, a uh, husk guy. Take him. How about with that heart? Hus, heart, cur? No. Brasky guy, brasky pants, brasky man. Bet nobody's, nope. somebody's got that. You know what, I'm, I need to go write some more and I'll, I'll be back. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, how about Nebraska? Sorry, dude. Uh, Nebraska. Good job. <coughs> Thanks, Mister. Hey guys, we probably should head over. Yeah, you're probably right. We gotta get coached, though. Hey, coach. By Adam Leonard. Brennan will run, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Gets just to the 40-yard line. Again, credit the defensive secondary of Idaho. Josh Shaw finally chased him down. Geico quote of the game. A sense of humor is important for a lot of jobs, including head coach. In the Geico quote of the game, Vandal head coach Rob Aikie said this when he was asked about the opening the wax schedule against White. Quote, I hope their plane is a little cramped up and it's a long, uncomfortable flight getting over here. Maybe they won't feel real good when they get off the plane. Unquote. You know, Jim, I don't think he was joking. Well, they go by charter. That uncomfortable, that's us. <laughs> Third down and seven. Brennan looking left, looking left. Now throws long up the sideline for Malcolm, and that is a touchdown. Malcolm Lane up the sideline. And Brennan was looking at him all the way, waiting, waiting for the pattern to ripen, and then he put the ball right there. Yeah, great job by Malcolm Lane, just using his speed, running right by the defensive back. Colt Brennan puts it right on the money. I mean, it was perfect. So for Malcolm Lane, as far as uh, his receptions, he had one touchdown reception last week against UNLV that was a beauty. And this one up the near sideline. Kelly in to try the extra point, and it is perfect. Hawaii now leading 21 to 7. Two touchdown passes in this game for Colt Brennan. He now has 107 in his career. Guy's a proven veteran and a big game pitcher. He says he tweaked his back and needs to go on the DL. He needs to go on the DL. Oh, please, will you give me a break? The guy is a wuss. He pitches once every five days. He's in the worst division in baseball. He is a spoiled, pampered softy. Easy on the cuticles. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning. This September, get ready for America's next great team. ESPN presents the FIFA Women's World Cup. Abby Wambach and Christine Lilly lead number one ranked Team USA into China. For a shot at glory, the time is now. The world is their stage. The 2007 FIFA Women's World Cup, September, live on ESPN and ESPN2. What's going on with your hat, man? What's wrong with my hat, man? I mean, it doesn't look like a ball player's hat. I mean, it looks all brand new, you know? Just come out of the box. <laughs> I'm a catcher, man. I, I never had to wear that thing. You got to bring this thing in. Hey, Wally. Wally. Hey, it's not what you think. 
Malcolm Lane with a touchdown reception. Second touchdown pass by Brennan in this game. 41 yards this time. 83 yards in 10 plays. Colt Brennan, 11 for 16, 147 yards. Two touchdowns and one interception. So Hawaii now leads 21 to 7. We start the second quarter. And kicking off will be Dan Kelly. Do we hail deep? Hale, an excellent returner. Backs up, backs up, takes it one yard deep. Here comes Hale. Hale gets nailed, bounces off, breaks another tackle. His horse collar, down he goes. Is that a face mask penalty? The official was looking. He was right there. There is no flag. Well, nice job by Dewey trying to keep it alive even after the initial hit. But the Warriors do exactly what you're supposed to do on kickoff, and that's keep on going till you hear the whistle. Hey, one thing about um, Dewey Hale, very resilient young man, as he was really hit. Yeah, and here they like kind of horse collared him rather than grab the face mask. It didn't look like a face mask to me either. Got back just short of the 20 yard line. In motion is Eddie Williams. He's been in motion this whole game. Ball is given to Bird, trying to get outside. Chased by Leonard. Leonard has him by the ankles, and down he goes. Very nice job of Adam Leonard fighting off his block, coming in behind the blocker, grabbing hold of Bird, and not letting go. Tackle for a loss. Loss from the 20 back to the 18 yard line. Second down and 12. Bird remains the single setback. They come out three wide receivers. Tight end sets up on the near side. Looking, throws, and it's broken up. Broken up by Monte. So Steve Brown, the intended receiver, but Monte, excellent position. That brings up third down and 12 for Idaho. Another blitz by Solomon Aluminium, forcing Enderley to get that ball off quick. And of course, great coverage by Keo Monte. Enderley in the shotgun. The motion again is Eddie Williams. They overload the right side. Rolling, Enderley. He may pass, he will, rather run, he will. And he gets over the 20 to about the 22. Way short of the first down. That brings up fourth down for Idaho. So the punt team comes on. Nice coverage by the Warriors there in the nickel defense, forcing Inderley to tuck it and run, and uh, does not look like much of a, a runner as, as, as uh, talent-wise goes. DJ Conley will kick the ball to Devon Bess. Ball is away. Excellent hang time. Excellent hang time. Calling for the fair catch as best. Gathers it in on the 29 yard line. And so Hawaii will put the ball in play there. You know, if you're a punter, Jim, you got to love playing here. I mean, playing inside, no cold, no wind. The, the roof's definitely high enough. I thought before I got here, this was my first time here, I thought the Kibbe Dome, the roof might be a problem on punts, but absolutely not. Uh, it's more than high enough. Uh, for nobody, for people that have never been to the Kibbe Dome, it's about two times bigger than the Stan Sheriff Center. Holds 16,000 people max. Conley, 48-yard punt that time. He's also punted a 52-yarder. First down for Hawaii. Brennan comes out. Three wide receivers to the right. David Farmer in the backfield with him. Brennan. Looking has time. Throws. That's complete the best crossing pattern over the 50. And he slides down to the 46 yard line. Stanley Franks finally halted his progress. Another completion for Brennan and the combination to Bess. That's why this particular season, no matter how you can criticize the opponent, watching the aesthetics of the pass by Brennan to these receivers is worth more than the price of admission. That was an example of it right there. The touchdown to Malcolm Lane. More evidence. First down at the 45 yard line of Idaho. 
Ball is handed to Wright Jackson. Jackson able to knife into the secondary, able to probe inside the 20 to about the 38 yard line. Good gain on the play. And that will bring up second down and three. Basic tamper right there. Hercules Satelli pulling, getting a nice lead block, keeping the defense off on us with uh, a run pass combination. Hawthorne trots out to the right. Malcolm Lane takes up station again on the left. Polaris now in the backfield with Brennan. Brennan, shovel pass to Polaris to the 30. Polaris to the 25, down to the 23-yard line. That was a great call by Hawaii because they seemed to sense the blitz. They seemed to sense that Idaho was trying to get to Brennan that time, and he was able to deal the ball off to Polaris for another first down. Polaris so quick here. Uh, has a hard time letting his uh, offensive lineman there. John Estes get out in front of him. Nice pickup. Brandon Ogletree made the stop on that play for Idaho. Polaris again in the backfield. Three wide receivers. Rice Mullins, Bass Hawthorne to the right. First down from the 24. The pass is complete to Bass at the five. Touchdown. Dewey well, Hale tried to cover him deep, couldn't do it. Another touchdown for Hawaii, and they right now lead it 27 to 7. Well, if he had a little rust at the beginning, he's hitting on all cylinders now. Colt Brennan, very, very nice throw, plenty of time. The Vandals defense corner has to be very frustrated at this point. They're blitzing, they're doing everything possible, and they just can't get to him, and Colt is picking their secondary apart. Tim Grasso will hold Dan Kelly for the point after. Ingram, the long snapper. Kick is good, 28 to 7, Hawaii. And still, 10 minutes and 44 seconds left to play in the first half. So we'll step away from the Kibbe Dome in Moscow, Idaho, where the temperature yesterday is in the cold 50s. ESPN Game Plan is presented by Olivia. Award-winning high-definition television. the highlights. There may be an asterisk right next to Barry Bonds. Beneath the surface. Which of these guns would an athlete be drawn to? Outside the Lines, hosted by Bob Lee. Sundays at 9.30 a.m. and weekdays at 3 on ESPN. Things you love about basketball. Quickness. Quickness. Athleticism. Athleticism. Desire. Desire. You're a fan. You just don't know it yet. Watch MLS Primetime Thursday, Thursday nights on ESPN2. Presented by Adidas. Excuse me, Poppy. Hey, what's up? I know you're busy. Love it to meet my family. Sure. Big Sox fans. My dad, Ed. Hi, Ed. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Mom, Mary. Hi, Mary. It's a pleasure. And that's my little sis, Christine. Christine. Hi. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. Thanks. Thanks, Poppy. Right. Nice to meet you. Let's go look at the uh, studio. The Hawaii Fortunes benefit. Here's Dewey Hale, doggedly coming up the field again. Hale looking for the opening, gets the opening, and then his ankle tackle as he crossed the 30. Great job by Keenan Jones right there. One of the two safety positions we saw it last week with Dan Kelly over on the left hand safety position. This time Keenan Jones on the right safety position right where he's supposed to be. Ball carrier pops out makes the tackle. Great Ke job. Keenan Jones Sorry. does not do that. That's a touchdown run. That's correct. So Dewey Hale another great return. Under center 
is Nathan Enderlin. Single setback is Bird. It's Bird. Bird, no gain. Maybe a loss the yard. That kickoff return of uh, 34 yards uh, by Hale is just indicative of the kind of talent that he has. There's David Vicuni, who is our AIG uh, Scholar Athlete of the Week. And the leader on the team in sacks with three. Second down and 10. Eddie Williams in motion. Ball is faked, and then the quarterback is thrown down by Illumimian. Or, excuse me, that's Carl Noah. Carl Noah, Illumimian 17, Carl Noah number 12. Nice job there of Carl actually playing off the block, keeping contained. And as the quarterback uh, did that uh, bootleg right there in his face. Nice job by Carl. Carl Noah made sure. 10 yard loss on that sack. For Noah, that is his um, second sack. He has two and a half on the season. Enderley throws over the middle, and inter almost intercepted. Almost intercepted by Mouton. Rather, yes, Mouton on the 48-yard uh, line. Stephen Brown was the intended receiver. So T.J. Comby will come in and punt again. And you get the impression that the more Idaho punts, the more opportunities Hawaii has to come right back down the field. We're off is looking very crisp at this point. Conley waiting for the snap. And gets it away. High floater. Bass will let it go. Takes an Idaho bounce and goes out of bounds inside the 25-yard line to the 24. Excellent punt. When we come back, Hawaii leading 28 to 7. We'll have another opportunity. Unbelievable. What's that? These athletes, some of the things they demand. Uh, who do these guys think they are? Lavender scented candles, organic fat free tofu burgers, an autographed poster of Nancy Kerrigan. Those aren't demands, those are necessities. There's a difference. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning. Football on ABC. All season long on ABC and ABC HD. College football lives here on ESPN. And to see it all, you need the ESPN Game Plan Pay-Per-View Package. With key matchups and rivalries from major conferences, you'll get up to 12 extra games every Saturday. Order now and you'll be all set for a full season of great college football with ESPN Game Plan. ESPN Game Plan presented by Olivia. Just $129 for a limited time. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. Games also available on ESPN360.com. This exclusive sports presentation of the home team is sponsored by Hawaiian Telecom. With speeds up to 11 megabytes per second, Hawaiian Telecom high-speed internet is now Hawaii's fastest internet. Sign up today and get your first month free. First down, Hawaii at their own 24. A pass to Malcolm Lane. Lane trying to come on the inside and try for something there, but... Joardis Ratti and Siua Musika right there to just spoil things. I mean, they exploded that play and a loss back to the 21. Yeah, that was that inside screen, and uh, Keith Asun was tied up with his blocker, and Malcolm ran right into him, and that was the end of the play. Take another gander at this. See, it ran right in. You're absolutely right. Went to Keith Asun. Three yard loss. Second down and 13. Wright Jackson in the backfield with Brennan. Brennan steps up, looks over the middle. Now spins out of the pocket. 
Looking some more. Directing. Throws. That's complete to Grace Mullins at the 30-yard line. It's uncanny the present that Colt Brennan has there in the pocket. I mean, he senses the pressure, spins out, avoids the sack, makes a completion. That That is just amazing to watch. Brian Williams made the tackle for Idaho. That brings up another third down. Crowd trying to get into it a little bit here. Help the Vandals out. Ball at the 26. Hawaii has to go to the 29 for the first down. Come out in four wides. Brennan steps up, throws. That's tipped in the air and intercepted by Vorbora. Second interception of the game thrown by Brennan. We'll see how this ball got altitude all of a sudden. Ball goes off. Looks like it went off the back of one of the players. Yeah. That could have gone off uh, Leon Wright Jackson. But Vobora right there. The nice ball just out play. of the reach of Bess. So David Vobora adds another statistic to his lustrous list. An interception. Eddie Williams in motion. An opportunity now for Idaho on the 38 of Hawaii. The ball is given up the middle. Carrying is Brian Flowers. Flowers is swallowed up by the white shirts. Short gain on the play. Well, in general, the Warrior defensive line is playing very well against the run this, e this afternoon. And uh, just again right there, controlled the line of scrimmage. No game. Essentially no game. Deontay Jackson has come into the game. He was not expected to play. High ankle strain. He did not look good before the game. We'll see what he does now. He leads the whack in rushing. Trying to get clear for a pass. And that ball is thrown wide. Excellent uh, pressure that time by Michael Lafaele. Well, it all started with the low snap causing uh, Enderlay to have to reach down to the ground and look back up. And during that time period, he had, had taken his eye off Jackson, who was not where the ball was thrown. And you don't know. Maybe that was the high ankle sprain, Jim. Third down to nine. You can see when he runs off the field, he is not running 100%. Tried to get the ball to him. Unable to do it that time. Third down, long yardage. Triple wide receiver. They go to the far side. As uh, going back to pass is Enderley with time. Enderley looking long, looking long, still with it. Now throws incomplete. Steve Brown was the closest Idaho receptor, but that ball was way to the front of him by about 10 yards. Well, you really have to credit the Hawaii defensive backfield. There was no one to throw to. And uh, Enderley couldn't do anything. By the time he even thought he saw somebody open, he threw it into the ground. Fourth down. A wasted opportunity by the Vandal offense right there. So Conley will come in and he'll try to get it as close to the goal line as he can. Very talented punter. There's the punt. High wobbly one going to the sideline. Nobody's going to touch that. Hawaii will have field position. Not a good punt that time. By T.J. Conley. How about a five-yard punt? Wow. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen that. So Hawaii benefits again. David Farmer comes into the backfield along with Brennan. Brennan has been intercepted in this game twice. Hawaii comes out in that spread formation again. Brennan looking, throws long, sideline. Malcolm, uh, Malcolm Blen Lane again. And they say incomplete, but we have a flag. There were, there were bumping going on. 
Stanley Franks was covering on the play for Idaho and we'll see what the call is. Stanley Franks out of Long Beach California went to Long Beach City College. First team all whack last year. Very good first player. down. Ten interceptions total in the last two years Jim. So Hawaii will benefit from the interference penalty. 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down ball at the 49 yard line. The Aloha Polaris goes into the backfield along with Brennan gets the handoff slips into the secondary and then finally is wedged to the turf. See Ua Musica there for the Vandals. Officially now they are saying that T.J. Conley's punt was not a five yard punt. It was a three yard punt. I give him too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> Those things happen. So Hawaii has moved the ball into Idaho territory. 559 left the play in this first half. Hawaii leading 28 to 7. Colt Brennan with Kealoha Polaris in the backfield with him. Sideline pattern complete to Greg Mullins. Mullins juke steps, kind of wigwags. And then goes out of bounds at the 40. That should be enough for a first down. They're going to say the 39, Brayon Williams of Idaho covering on the play. So Hawaii inexorably moving the ball down the field. And a lot of it has to do with the Warrior offensive line. They're doing a nice job blocking, giving Colt time. The Vandals ran a stunt on that last play. Nothing doing. Couldn't get there. Seven yard pickup on that last pass completion. So Brennan with the ball just inside the Idaho 40 yard line. Polaris back there with him. Showing blitz Idaho here they come. Brennan gets rid of the ball gets it to Bess at the 45. Bess gets out of bounds. And he was tangled up over there with Vaboro. Well as you said Jim the Vandals showing blitz there on the Warriors left hand side. I happen to think that might be the only way you can defend against Colt Brennan when the Warrior offense is really clicking. But you don't want to show them. You don't want to walk up and let them know it's a blitz and it's going to be man to man coverage. Six yard gain on that pass to Bess. Second down. And about three and a half for the first down. Triple wide receiver to the left. Brennan looking left, looking over the middle. Now just throws it to Bess and Bess gets walloped. And let's see, did the ball come out? Or is that an incompletion? That's an incompletion. They say Best did not have control. Boy, that time Brennan made the wrong decision because he he just fed Best the ball and Best was in a lion's den. Ogletree made the hit on him. Best really got swallowed. He looks a little bit knocked around even right now. He's, he looks a little banged up, Jim. So it is third down. Another third down play for Hawaii. Hawthorne, Bryce Mullins to the far side. Malcolm Lane and best to the near side. And timeout has been called. Things you love about football. Contact. Contact. Accuracy. Teamwork. Teamwork. You're a fan. You just don't know it yet. Watch MLS Primetime Thursday, Thursday nights on ESPN2. Presented by Adidas. How long have you been up there? I don't know. I think a while. ESPN Ultimate NASCAR. Own all four volumes on DVD now. The greatest drivers. There's the checkered flag for Allen. The fastest cars. 
the biggest moments. Get under the hood with these fully loaded DVDs. Experience life at 200 miles per hour. ESPN Ultimate NASCAR. Own all four volumes on DVD now. And the perfect gift all year long at Big Island Candies. Click on BigIslandCandies.com and place your order now. Big third down play. Third down three and a half. The ball at the 33 of Idaho. Brennan looking, steps up. Brennan trying to run for the first down. Does he have it? Knife's inside the 30. He'll be close. He'll be close. Joe Artis Ratty finally diagnosed what uh, Brennan was doing. Without measurement, they call it a first down. It is a first down for Hawaii. They convert again. Right before the timeout there, Jim, uh, one of the uh, defensive coaches actually called it for Idaho. They only had 10 players on the field uh, and went over and scolded Taylor Rust for not being in there. David Farmer comes into the backfield for Hawaii. And here they come. That offensive line, Asun, Sateli, Estes, Saufea, and Steinhoff. First down from the 30-yard line of Idaho. Brennan with time. Now throws. Throws behind Bess again. That's the fourth time that he is not connected, and Bess was open. And more importantly, that offensive line gave Brennan an eternity back there. Ogletree covering on the play for Idaho. Brennan, 16 of 22, three touchdowns, two interceptions. It's pretty amazing. 16 of 22 and four passes were yeah. a little bit behind. I mean, that's just amazing stats. Second down and 10. 447 left to play in the first half. Brennan again, backing up, looking, sideline pattern. That is complete to Malcolm Lane. Lane is short of the first down. He goes out at the 22-yard line. Brayon Williams covering on the play for Idaho. Just a nice down and out by Malcolm Lane, reading a soft flat coverage by the corner. 218 yards now in passing for Brennan. And another third down. Idaho crowd trying to get into it a little bit, help their team. Third down and three. Brennan looking, looking, checks off, now throws. That is complete to Bess, and he gets sandwiched. The ball comes out, but I believe he had control, and now they're saying incomplete. Oh, I thought he had control. I thought so too, Jim. And then he was hit, went down, and the ball came out. It was a nice sandwich hit by the Vandals. Shiloh Kale really hit him. There you see the hit, and then the ball comes out. Well, that may have been a good call. So a field goal now. This will be a 39-yarder by Dan Kelly. Out of the hold of Tim Grasso. Kelly kicks it. This one has the distance, and it is good. So Dan Kelly, 39-yard field goal. Kelly in field goals now three for five. His, his uh, longest field goal of the year and his most important field goal of the year, 49 yards against Louisiana Tech. He doesn't make that one. Hawaii oh, doesn't win the game. Nakoa football is the official booster club of the University of Hawaii Warriors. For more information on the Nakoa football club, Please call 956-4513, 956-4513, or visit them on the web at www.nakoa.org. Here you see Bob Akey. Bob Akey knows that when he got the job, he had a big, he had just had a big image problem. He was the third new coach in three years. He was the fourth new coach in five years. So when he told this team, you know, I'm here for you, they kind of laughed at him because all of the other coaches had, say, had said the same thing. And left at and the left. end of the year. And left. Well, as a defensive coach, he's got to be very frustrated. Shiloh Keo is deep. 
for the kickoff. Kale takes it three yards deep, and here he comes. Kale runs with authority, trying to get outside, stumbles, breaks a tackle. Down he goes, short of the 20 yard line at about the 17. Dane Parlison on the play there, making a the tackle. Nice job by the Warrior kickoff team, closing down all the running lanes and fording, uh, forcing KO to run all the way over to the other side. Hawaii now leading 31 to 7 here in the first half. Shiloh Keo, a man of many talents. He's usually a punt returner. He's fifth nationally in punt returns with a 21-yard average. He had a 100-yard punt return for a touchdown against Northern Illinois last week, and that's the best yet this year. Enderley throws and throws it badly. Throws it behind Maurice Shaw and too low. That'll bring up second down and 10. Well, as we said in the keys of the game, Jim, uh, Idaho goes so go as how Enderley goes. And uh, he just hasn't really turned anything on yet other than that first drive. So Idaho comes out in a, an offensive set very much like the University of Hawaii spread out. Enderley looking now lays off the ball. They set up the screen on the far side. But a short gain on the play. Jason Bird was able to gather it in. And he's able to get over the 20-yard line to about the 21. That's almost like a half screen there. They just pulled the uh, left guard and left tackle. You got uh, Mike Iopati out there who um, arguably is one of the best offensive linemen on that squad and somebody that the Warrior defense was concerned about, Warrior defensive coaching staff. They're down in seven. They come out in the same offensive set. Enderley looking left. Throws. That is intercepted. That is intercepted by Newberry. And Newberry goes up the sideline thinking touchdown and gets bumped out of bounds inside the 10 yard line at the eight. Steve Brown was the intended uh, receiver. I believe Bird is the one that actually pushed him out of bounds there Jim. There you see. And Bird did get to him and pushed him out of bounds. So another interception and a golden opportunity. The ball inside the 10. And right as I had talked about Enderley not doing anything, he continued it. Here comes Hawaii. David Farmer back with Brennan. Farmer usually in for blocking purposes, giving Brennan more time to go through his progressions. Brennan looking left, checking off, looking left again, twirls away. And we will have a holding penalty on Hawaii now throws and a leaping catch in the end zone. But that will not count. Keith Asun, I think, will be a call for the holding. On uh, number 57, Taylor Rust, it, it got to the point where you could see the jersey being pulled back quite a bit. That's an example of when you get down inside the 10-yard line and you're looking for a touchdown pass. Very little room to work with. I mean, that it looks like an airport. Big crowd down in that yardage. So they're talking. Bill Lathan making sure. Aloha Polaris has gone in replacing Farmer. Looks like there was probably multiple issues on that play. There are two Jeff. fouls against the offense. The first foul is illegal touch. The player went out of bounds and was the first to touch the ball on the pass. That penalty is declined. Holding offense number 65. That is a 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. He, he threw the flag right at number 62. 65, 62. I mean, referees have a lot to think about. It is still first down, but now it is back to the 18 yard line. The good news is it gives Brennan more yardage in which to work. Triple wide receiver to the left. Brennan looking, checks off. Now goes end zone, throws it high and gets picked off again. Brayon Williams. Williams to the 30. Williams may score. Being chased down, Williams will finally run out of room.
And it is Chris Smith instead of uh, Brayon Williams. So Chris Smith, center fielder. This ball was it came out wrong. It just came out wrong. Third interception, 70-yard return. You got C.J. Hawthorne and Kealoha Polaris and Cole Britton all getting over there to make sure he doesn't score. So that is the first interception by Chris Smith, 5'9", senior out of Corona, California. We thought it was Williams in the beginning as he has started up. But there you see Chris Smith, excellent interception. Opportunity here for Idaho. They have it at the 30. Ball is given on a reverse. And to the 30-yard line, down to the 25 is Shiloh Kao. Kale playing both ways. Michael Lafaele finally tackled him. Able to carry the ball to the 24 yard line. Two minutes and 55 seconds left. Bird the single setback. Enderly under center. Enderly audibilizing. Sets up, throws. That's intercepted, and this is going to be a foot race. With it is Newberry. He's got another opportunity to score. Chasing him is Bird. Newberry at the 10 gets a block touchdown. And they're going to call him for unsportsmanlike conduct for leaping into the end zone. Hey, I'd like to see you run that far. Great job by Michael Lau getting down there and being able to catch up with Jason Bird and throw a block on him so that Newberry could get into the end zone. That's the effort that the Warrior defense works on all week long, practicing turnovers there and turning it into scores. You think that was a... Uh, I just think he was happy to be there. That's right. You run all that way. But there's no happiness? Today is a non-happiness day? I guess so. Can't be happy. Not allowed. Can't dive into the end zone in exultation. Here's Kelly. Kick is up, and it is good. Hawaii now leads 38-7 to over Idaho. 38-7, to and they've done it in a multitude of ways. And credit Newberry gets another chance. When you get another chance, you make the most of it. Nice job by the rest of that defensive squad doing everything they could to help them get there. The Jack Fact is sponsored by Jack in the Box. Try Jack's new sirloin steak and egg burrito. Only a Jack in the Box where breakfast is served all day. A victory over Idaho would give Hawaii their sixth consecutive road win, tying the longest road win streak in school's history. That's in 1980-81. Who was on that team? I was on that team you in were? 1981 and 82. Right guard you? in 81 and left guard in 82. Really? Yeah, I used to say that's when we were good, but they're way better than <laughs> we were. Dewey Hale has come in uh, to try to return it again, but he will move up the 15 yard exaltation penalty on Newberry will move the ball back to the 15 yard line and that is where Dan Kelly will kick off. I don't know I guess strict interpretation of the rules you should not dive into the end zone but I mean you run all of that way and he runs the whole game now he's a you know defensive back but uh, I'd like to take that case if it ever goes to court. Here comes Hale. Hale looking for the opening. Hale ankle tackle as he crosses the 35 yard line. Derek Iannucci, the uh, Hawaii SID, just stuck his head in here to let us know that uh, the three interceptions by Colt Brennan so far this game is a career high for him. Mm -hmm. So the, that. Maybe again coming back after uh, not playing against Charleston Southern. Oh, that last interception just came out of his hands wrong. I mean, it was a wobbler. Rustin Saoli made the uh, tackle. Hey, 
What was the penalty? And it sounds like it's a do over on the penalty going into the end zone because they didn't kick it the right way. Uh, he said a free kick. That's what I heard him say. Well, <laughs> I'm uh, rather confused now. I didn't know that they could. I'm trying to see where they marked the ball. They're going to mark the ball. I mean, at the 10 yard line. What did they do wrong? We need more of an explanation here. I guess maybe it was uh, offsides on the kicking team. Uh, they were on the 15. That would explain a five yard penalty. Mm -hmm. And it was offside. Now we're being informed that it was. Maurice Shaw is back to run it back for Idaho with 235 left to play in the first half. There's the kick by Kelly. Shaw takes it on the 17. Shaw gets to the 35. Shaw appeared to be looking for something, either someone to lateral it to or some other possibility. But he sure didn't have speed running up in there. And a uh, nice job by nice job by Dan Kelly kicking off that ball getting it all the way down to the 17 yard line and the Warrior kickoff team settling down getting in their lanes and uh, not letting a big return happen there. Joe Pierre Davis there to make the stop on the special teams for Hawaii. So here comes Idaho. And the new quarterback is coming in. That's Brian Noy. Noy replacing Enderley. Noy from the shotgun, his first pass. Throws, that is complete. To the 45 yard line to Eddie Williams. Covering on the play was Gerard Lewis. Prior to that play, Jim, Noy had only had one pass thrown so far this year and it was incomplete. Noy from Pendleton, Oregon, throwing that pass. Last year in that 68 to 10 game, he was 0 for 5 in passing against Hawaii. That's his first completion. Noy to throw again. Pump fakes. In trouble. He'll run. He has running room. Chase down by Adam Leonard. Short of the first down. Adam Noy, Adam Noy trying to give life to this Idaho offense. Trailing now 38 to 7. With two minutes exactly left to play in this first half. Nine yard gain on that jaunt. Quick pass. That is complete to Eddie Williams. And Williams struggles, finally goes out of bounds. So Eddie Williams, the favorite target today. Williams on an end around early has accounted for the only touchdown for Idaho, an 18 yard run. Seven yard gain that time. So Idaho, as they Wind the clock again. Has the ball at the 37-yard line of Hawaii. That was unusual. They were in their two-minute offense to play before, and now they're taking their time. Noy audibleizing. Bird is back there with him. Double wide receiver to the near side. Noy looking again, escapes and slides to the 35. That'll bring up second down. Brian Noy. N double O Y. That's how you spell. That's how you spell his name. You notice uh, when Brian Noy was scrambling and he saw Timo Paapuli coming at him and he said, I'll take a knee. He takes a knee. Hawaii three interceptions for 86 yards. And then Idaho three interceptions for 73 yards. But it's a uh, it's amazing. Don't stand in line to purchase UH tickets. Buy your individual game tickets online and print them. Print them on your home or office computer. Purchasing UH tickets has never been easier. Visit HawaiiAthletics.com for more information. Hawaii certainly in control of this game at the present time, 38 to 7. Last week, Northern Illinois went off to a big lead, only to hold on at the end as uh, Idaho came back in the second half. In fact, Idaho was uh, down 35 to 7 at one point 
in the second quarter, Jim, and like you said, came back and uh, played it to a 42-35 game, and they actually ran out of time on the 18-yard line. They could have tied it up. Second down and eight. The ball at the 35-yard line. Noy again to throw. Throws it, and they're going to say complete. It is complete. And it's complete to uh, Stephen Brown. Well, that ate up a lot of time off the clock by catching yeah. that pass for a, for a four-yard game. Less than a minute to play. Third down on a long five. Quick pattern. Throws. Throws it low. Covering on the play. For Hawaii was Newberry. Intended for Brown. So that pass stops the clock with 42.6 seconds left in the first half. It's been a game. It's been a game filled with action. It's been a game filled with with possibilities and filled with changes. Momentum changes. Back and forth and back and forth. It hasn't been boring, that's for sure. So this field goal, this is a 50 yard attempt by Amancio. He is uh, in field goals 12th in the whack. There's the kick and it has a chance. It is good. His longest was 51. That makes a 50 yarder. And when you're kicking indoors, you got to make you got to make field goals like that. But he, he looked like he was right at the end of his range. I mean, he might be able to hit 52, but that's about it. It just went over there and hit the big eye vandals underneath the camera past the goalpost. And the, I, there's a camera guys up there on that uh, on that hoist. Scissors lift. Yeah, and they're the targets. <laughs> they're the targets. That ball goes right in there, zipping right in there. I, I, lo I love how the clock says 36.4 seconds. I mean, you usually don't see that in football stadiums, but yeah. this doubles as their basketball arena, doesn't it, Jim? It does. Uh, what they will do is they'll roll up uh, this turf, and it takes them a long time. It takes them days to do it. And then they'll put out the uh, basketball court, and this is where they'll play their whack games. Well, seeing how when we woke up this morning and walked over to Denny's, it was about 38 degrees. I got to believe you have to have indoor football and basketball here, or you won't have anybody here. <laughs> it was cold. Mancio will kick off. Short kick, and that is returned over the 40, close to the 50-yard line by Braxton Satelli. Satelli, number 13. Satelli from Mililani. Same number of his father, Alvis Satelli, yes. a very good outside linebacker for the Warriors in the 80s. Isaac Butt and Brandon Ogletree double team them. Now, with Hawaii with 29.5, this is the kind of offense that 29.5 for them is a long time. See if they can capitalize here. Brennan with Polaris back with him. Three wide receivers to the left. Shovel pass. Polaris. He gets wrapped up at the 50 yard line. Well, they waited for him there. They ambushed him. Joe Artis Ratty. And also Ben Alexander. Alexander not really expected to play in this game for Idaho. Very short gain, if any. And now they're going to put the going to put the 23 seconds back on the plug. 23 point or 23. 0. Yeah, 23 point zero. So they do. Nice job by Ratty there, smelling out that uh, shovel pass. All over it, actually, just nowhere to go. Hope Brennan has thrown three touchdown passes in this first half. He has also thrown three interceptions in this first half. Gain on the play of only a yard. The ball is at midfield. We've had two interceptions by Hawaii by the Hawaii secondary for touchdowns. One by Adam Leonard and the other by Myron Newberry. Brennan to throw. Now does crossing pattern. 
Excellent catch by Best. Runs out of bounds. Stops the clock inside the 30-yard line. I don't know if we have a replay on that, but Keith Asun did an awesome job on the pass rush. The defender actually spinned hard inside, and he did a counter spin and, and met up with him. If you watch here on the left-hand side of the screen, look at that, how he turned back around and got right back in the guy's face and allowed Colt to have time to make that completion. Another excellent pass and catch. First down, the clock is stopped. 16.4 seconds left. 20-yard gain on that last play. Brennan with the ball at the 28. Polaris back there with him. Brennan steps up in the pocket, throws. That's a short pass. And being knocked down on that play for Hawaii is, uh, let's see, that's uh, C.J. Hawthorne. C.J. Hawthorne, that number tucked up underneath his pads. Well, Jim, they've got about enough time for two plays. And they've got one timeout left, so. And they also have Dan Kelly. Jordis Ratty was in on that uh, last play for, for Idaho. This is uh, interesting for uh, Devon Best. He has caught nine for 118 yards and one touchdown. What is amazing, always amazing, Hawaii really doesn't change their wide receivers. I mean, they run all game long. And they don't change what they do. Yeah. They get very, very good at it, and they say, try and stop us, and so far nobody has. 10.1. Ball is thrown out to Bess, looking for openings. Bess keeps his feet until about the 15. We have a penalty flood. Ryan Grice Mullins loses his helmet. I think that may play into the penalty being called. So we'll see. Bill Lathan is never in a rush. Personal foul, face mask, defense number eight. That penalty will be assessed half the distance from the end of the run and an automatic first down. Timeout, University of Hawaii. This is Hawaii's third and final charge timeout. This will be a 30-second charge timeout. Raymond Fry is number eight. David Vavora, David Vavora was actually covering yeah. Ryan Grice Mullins, so I don't know how you see eight out of 40, but... Uh, and it doesn't even rhyme. <laughs> Here's, uh, here's Dan Kelly. Ball will be placed just behind the 15-yard uh, line. So this will be a 25-yarder for Kelly. For him, it's a chip shot. And that's good. So Hawaii puts three more on the, on the board, and that makes it 41-10 to 10 at halftime. And Hawaii has scored now 32 or more points in... 15 straight games. And that's the end of the first half. Hawaii dominates Idaho 41 to 10. Husk Huskers. No. Huskers with a, with a Z? No. Ooh, a uh, husk guy. Take him. How about with that heart? Hus heart cur? No. Brasky guy, brasky pants, brasky man. But nobody's nope. Somebody's got that. You know what? I'm. I need to go write some more, and I'll. I'll be back. Oh wait, 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 wait. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, how about Nebraska? Sorry, dude. Uh, Nebraska. Good job. <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Hey guys, you probably should head over. Yeah, you're probably right. We gotta get coach though. Hey coach, let's go, man. We gotta roll. Please. I guess we'll meet him over there. Yeah. Do you know game day? Go to collegegameday.com to find out. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturdays at 10 a.m. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, 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 the ring of fire, the ring of fire. 
The chase for the Nextel Cup Series championship is on ABC. Sometimes the way out. This is everything to me. Is the way in. Box is my life, is what I love. On an all-new season of The Contender, the road will travel through 16 dreams. I really can't be stopped. 10 weeks. This is pretty much make it or break it. Every round counts. One shot. I'll do whatever it takes. I'm not playing on losing. The Contender, an all-new season begins Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern, only on ESPN. Game Plan is presented by Olivia, award-winning high-definition television. about baseball is how great it is to talk about baseball. I just love watching them on the rubber. Up to the minute highlights, breakdown, and spirited commentary. When you're prepared like that, you're a winning player. Baseball tonight, every night on ESPN. First, there were the pajamas your uncle got you when you were born. After that, it was your first glove. Your first real glove. Next, it was sitting in the kitchen asking your dad about the designated hitter. But then, then you saw what is to this day the bluest sky and the greenest grass you could ever see. And that's when it really started. Your highlights tonight were perfect. Or hey, guys. Hey, hey, hey what's up, man? We still going out tonight? Oh, definitely. It's a huge night Stuart and John are coming to. Nice. Where should we meet? What about the lobby? No, 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 lobby's no good. He'll, uh, he'll look there. I'd say parking lot. Cool. Seven o'clock. I'll be there. Well, see you, see you guys later. Oh, yeah. Big night. Oh, huge. So, have you been on a lot of blind dates? Um, well, this would make one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. me too. What do you do? I'm a vet. I love animals. Really? Yeah. Where are you from? Michigan. Born and raised. Go blue. Go Buckeyes! Go Buckeyes! Guy's a proven veteran and a big game pitcher. He says he tweaked his back and needs to go on the DL. He needs to go on the DL. Oh, please, will you give me a break? The guy is a wuss. He pitches once every five days. He's in the worst division in baseball. He is a spoiled, pampered softy. Easy on the cuticles. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning. This September, get ready for America's next great team. ESPN presents the FIFA Women's World Cup. Abby Wambach and Christine Lilly lead number one ranked Team USA into China. Goal! For a shot at glory, the time is now. The world is their stage. The 2007 FIFA Women's World Cup, September, live on ESPN and ESPN2. Jorge. Yeah. What's going on with your hat, man? What's wrong with my hat, man? I mean, it doesn't look like a ball player's hat. I mean, it looks all brand new. You know? Just come out of the box. <laughs> I'm a catcher, man. I, I never had to wear that thing. You got to bring this thing in. Hey, Wally! Wally! Hey! It's not what you think! Yes. 
ESPN Game Plan is presented by Olivia, award-winning high-definition television. On the highlights. There may be an asterisk right next to Barry Bonds. Beneath the surface. Which of these guns would an athlete be drawn to? Outside the Lines, hosted by Bob Lee. Sundays at 9.30 a.m. and weekdays at 3 on ESPN. Things you love about basketball. Quickness. Quickness. Athleticism. Athleticism. Desire. Desire. You're a fan. You just don't know it yet. Watch MLS Primetime Thursday, Thursday nights on ESPN2. Presented by Adidas. Excuse me, Poppy. Hey, what's up? I know you're busy. Love to meet my family. Sure. Big Sox fans. My dad, Ed. Hi, Ed. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Mom, Mary. Hi, Mary. It's a pleasure. And that's my little sis, Christine. Christine. Hi. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. Thanks. Thanks, Poppy. Right. Nice meeting you. Let's go look at the uh, studio. A little oh, house in the prairie. Yes! yes. Oh. One more. Go. Another. Go quick, 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 quick. OK, uh, three words, three syllables. First word, hook. Hook, yes. hook, hook, hook. Okay. Whoa, what else? Hook. Horns. Yes. Hook. Horns. Yes. Hook. He's so got it. He's so got it. <laughs> Come on. Come on, man. No, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> An insane deer. Deer? Mm -hmm. That's not. Wow. There you go. Paper. <laughs> Taco meat. Unbelievable. What's that? These athletes, some of the things they demand. Uh, who do these guys think they are? Lavender scented candles? Organic, fat-free tofu burgers, an autographed poster of Nancy Kerrigan? Those aren't demands. Those are necessities. There's a difference. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning. Football on ABC, all season long on ABC and ABC HD. College football lives here on ESPN, and to see it all, you need the ESPN Game Plan Pay-Per-View Package. With key matchups and rivalries from major conferences, you'll get up to 12 extra games every Saturday. Order now, and you'll be all set for a full season of great college football with ESPN Game Plan. ESPN Game Plan presented by Olivia. Just $129 for a limited time. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. Games also available on ESPN360.com. Things you love about football. Contact. Contact. Accuracy. Accuracy. Teamwork. Teamwork. You're a fan. You just don't know it yet. Watch MLS Primetime Thursday, Thursday nights on ESPN2. Presented by Adidas. 
How long has he been up there? I don't know. I think a while. ESPN Ultimate NASCAR. Own all four volumes on DVD now. The greatest drivers. There's the checkered flag for Allen. The fastest cars. The biggest moments. Get under the hood with these fully loaded DVDs. Experience life at 200 miles per hour. ESPN Ultimate NASCAR. Own all four volumes on DVD now. Huskers. No. Huskers with a, with a Z? No. Ooh, a uh, husk guy. Take him. How about with that heart, hus, heart, cur? No. Brasky guy, brasky pants, brasky man. Bet nobody's, nope. somebody's got that. You know what, I'm, I need to go write some more and I'll, I'll be back. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, how about Nebrask? Sorry, dude. Uh, Nebrask. Good job. Thanks, mister. Hey, guys, you probably should head over. Yeah, you're probably right. We gotta get coach, though. Hey, coach! Let's go, man. We gotta roll. Lee! I guess we'll meet him over there. Yeah. You know game day? Go to collegegameday.com to find out. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturdays at 10 a.m. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, 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 the ring of fire, the ring of fire. The chase for the Nextel Cup Series championship is on ABC. Sometimes the way out. This is everything to me. Is the way in. Box is my life, is what I love. On an all-new season of The Contender, the road will travel through 16 dreams. I really can't be stopped. 10 weeks. This is pretty much make it or break it. Every round counts. One shot. I'll do whatever it takes. I'm not playing on losing. The Contender, an all-new season begins Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern, only on ESPN. ESPN Game Plan is presented by Olivia, award-winning high-definition television. about baseball is how great it is to talk about baseball. I just love watching them on the rubber. Up to the minute highlights, breakdown, and spirited commentary. When you're prepared like that, you're a winning player. Baseball tonight, every night on ESPN. First, there were the pajamas your uncle got you when you were born. After that, it was your first glove. Your first real glove. Next, it was sitting in the kitchen asking your dad about the designated hitter. But then, then you saw what is to this day the bluest sky and the greenest grass you could ever see. And that's when it really started. Your highlights tonight were perfect. Or hey, guys. Hey, hey, hey what's up, man? We still going out tonight? Well, definitely. It's a huge night. Stuart and John are coming, too. Nice. Where should we meet? What about the lobby? No, 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 lobby's no good. He'll, uh, he'll look there. I'd say parking lot. Cool. Seven o'clock. I'll be there. Well, see you, see you guys later. Oh, yeah. Big night. Oh, huge.
So, have you been on a lot of blind dates? Um, well, this would make one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. me too. What do you do? I'm a vet. I love animals. Really? Yeah. Where are you from? Michigan. Born and raised. Go blue. Go Buckeyes! Go Buckeyes! Ten lead at the half. Now the highlights for so far in the first half. The UH defense, Myron Newberry, all over with two interceptions. Right here, getting pushed out of bounds by Jason Bird. And the next one, his interception for a touchdown. Look at that long run. He has to make nice. some decisions here at the end, huh? Yep, nice blocking by uh, Ryan, uh, excuse me, uh, Michael Lau. And now Devon Best highlights. Coming, uh, nice out right here by Devon. Coming across. You know, last week, Devon only had two receptions versus Charleston Southern. So far today, he's got 10 in the first half for 127 yards. Jim, you think Devon's happy that Colt's back this week? I would think so. And he has um, really had a high energy first half, that's for sure. The, ch the car plan adjustments. Hawaii gets some sacks. Hawaii's playing with four down linemen. You know Idaho is going to be um, passing the ball most of the second half trying to catch up. We need to get some sacks and Idaho needs to put a drive together. Otherwise this game will just get completely away from them if it hasn't already. And a halftime adjustment sponsored of course by Cairo Plan. How are you? 41 to 10 back with the second half after this. ESPN Game Plan is presented by Olivia, award-winning high-definition television. the highlights. There may be an asterisk right next to Barry Bonds. Beneath the surface. Which of these guns would an athlete be drawn to? Outside the Lines, hosted by Bob Lee. Sundays at 9.30 a.m. and weekdays at 3 on ESPN. Things you love about basketball. Quickness. Quickness. Athleticism. Athleticism. Desire. Desire. You're a fan. You just don't know it yet. Watch MLS Primetime Thursday, Thursday nights on ESPN2. Presented by Adidas. Excuse me, Poppy. Hey, what's up? I know you're busy. Love it to meet my family. Sure. Big Sox fans. My dad, Ed. Hi, Ed. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Mom, Mary. Hi, Mary. It's a pleasure. And that's my little sis, Christine. Christine. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. Thanks. Thanks, Poppy. Right. Nice to meet you. Let's go look at the uh, studio. With longer hours in more locations than any other bank in Hawaii, and by Kaiser Permanente. Drive. Let's find out what's on tap. Sponsored by Heineken. I turn to the Grand Puba football to find out what to look for in the second half. That would make me like Fred Flintstone, huh? Yes. Anyway, uh, Hawaii, they just need to finish. Uh, they got a loud crowd here in the Kibbe Dome. Come out here, score some points, put the game away. For Idaho, they need to think just like last week. They were in here against Northern Illinois. At one point in the second quarter, they were down 31-7. to They scored 21 points in the second half 
drove the ball down. They had an onside kick. They got it back, drove it down to the 18, and they, they turned it over on downs, but they were in that game to the very end. They need to think, just like last week, score some points in the second half. So going back for the second half kickoff, it's uh, Washington. Kickoff will go to him. And he takes it at the one. Washington trying to find the opening. Finally gets tripped up as he crosses the 20, the 22 yard line. So it will be first down for Hawaii at the 22 to start the second half. Colt Brennan is 23 of 33, 276 yards, three touchdowns, three interceptions. He's been sacked once. On the kickoff there, that was Justin Allen coming down and just laying a hat on the blocker. As they both bounced off, he made the tackle. So Hawaii will start with the same four wide receivers. David Farmer back with Brennan. Goes to work in the second half. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up. Sideline pattern. That's complete to Malcolm Lane. Lane has the first down. 12-yard gain. Out to about the 35-yard line. David Vobora there to make the tackle. Vobora in the in the first half had a total of four tackles, all meaningful. Also, Brayon Williams was able uh, to put the pressure on. And Vobora had that nice interception there on the uh, deflection. So Hawaii goes to work again, this time from the 35-yard line. Brennan sideline pattern to the near side hit immediately was C.J. Hawthorne. Hawthorne really took a bump by Brayon Williams. Well, the Vandal defense is not giving the same amount of cushion that they gave in the first half. They're playing tighter. They're trying to get to the ball quicker. We'll see if it makes a difference. In the last two plays, it didn't make any. Another first down. Two plays, 20 yards covered by this uh, Hawaii offense. Busy all the time. Lane to the far side, Hawthorne to the near side. On the wings, Grice Mullins and Bess. Kind of a different look. Brennan looks, throws, coming back for the ball. I'm not able to hold on to it. Uh, was um, Malcolm Lane. Should have made the catch on that one. On that play, the uh, Idaho defense did a zone blitz on the left-hand side of the Warrior offense. That was the blitz that was so effective by Oregon State last year. They got the Colt four or five times. Warriors did a great job of picking it up. Second down and 10. The ball from the 45-yard line. Hawaii leading here 41 to 10 just at the start of the second half. Brennan. The throw again in trouble steps out of it still looking still looking now throw sideline pattern and it goes off of Grice Mullins. Grice Mullins was on the sideline the ball thrown high you can see some of the scrambling ability that time of Brennan David Bobora covering on the play. Good pressure good pressure that time by Siua Musica. Also in on the play was Ben Alexander Jim uh, cutting underneath Keone Steinhoff. Alexander, one of the injured, he was probable for this game, number 58 for Idaho. So another third down play for Hawaii. Third and 10 from the 45-yard line to start the second half. David Farmer in the backfield with Brennan. Brennan needs 10 for the first down. Throws long, and there's nobody there. Some mix-up on that play. C.J. Hawthorne went long. Brennan goes palms upwards. That was not the correct pattern, perhaps. Stanley Franks covering on the play. That'll bring a fourth down. And here comes Tim Grasso. Tim Grasso has been the patient man. He has punted only eight times all season. 42.8 yard average, his longest punt 51. So he has a chance to root it here. Shiloh Keo is deep for Idaho. Grasso 
off the side of his foot. A wobbler coming up as K.O. takes it at the 20. K.O. is free over the 30, over the 35. Shiloh, just a tough individual. Francis Maka on the special teams making the stop for Hawaii. So it will be first down for Idaho. What will be interesting here, who starts the second half for Idaho at quarterback? And it's going to be Enderly. Enderly getting a reprieve at halftime. He was replaced. He was yanked in the first half. 12-yard punt and a 19-yard return. Good field position for Idaho. And this is number one. That's Deontay Jackson who leads the WAC um, in um, rushing. Jackson, 100 carries. That's his 102nd carry. He has 537 yards. He averages 134.2 yards a game. Three touchdowns. He has a high ankle sprain, and they're going to try to inject him as much as possible here in the second half. But as soon as I say that, Jason Bird comes in as the uh, setback. Eddie Williams in motion. Yes. Second yes. down and seven. Yes. Ball is faked. Yes. And a sack. Down goes Enderley. Great job by Amani Purcell. Did not bite at all. Kept his contained responsibilities right in Enderley's face. Amani Purcell, 6'4", senior from Bongo Pongo, American Samoa. And a transfer to Hawaii from Penn State. A cousin of the former warrior. He's the cousin of the former warrior Alvis Satelli, and brother, of course, of Mel Purcell. Loss of 10. Anderley's second sack that he has endured in this game. And for Purcell, that is his second sack of the season. Third down, and whistle blows to negate the play. Time and out. we'll see what happens. Timeout has been called. Idaho. Idaho calls this is a timeout. Idaho's first charge timeout. So this we'll step away from the Kibbe Dome in Moscow, Idaho. ESPN Game Plan is presented by Olivia, award-winning high-definition television. about baseball is how great it is to talk about baseball. I just love watching them on the rubber. Up to the minute highlights, breakdown, and spirited commentary. When you're prepared like that, you're a winning player. Baseball tonight, every night on ESPN. First, there were the pajamas your uncle got you when you were born. After that, it was your first glove. Your first real glove. Next, it was sitting in the kitchen asking your dad about the designated hitter. But then, then you saw what is to this day the bluest sky and the greenest grass you could ever see. And that's when it really started. Your highlights tonight were perfect. Or hey, guys. Hey, hey, hey what's up, man? Yeah. We still going out tonight? Well, definitely. It's a huge night. Stuart and John are coming, too. Nice. Where should we meet? What about the lobby? No, 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 lobby's no good. He'll, uh, he'll look there. I'd say parking lot. Cool. Seven o'clock. I'll be there. Well, see you, see you guys later. Oh, yeah. Big night. Oh, huge. He tackles, fighting hard, gets over the 40-yard line. So finally, Gerard Lewis and friends come over along with Ryan Mouton to tackle Eddie Williams. 10-yard gain. Williams in the first half had two receptions. That is his third that we've just witnessed. But for Williams, an 18 yard end around, the only touchdown that Idaho has scored. 
You know T.J. Connolly, the punter for the Vandals, definitely wants to get one better than the last one he had at the end of the second quarter for three yards. There's the punt. Best comes up, calls for the fair catch, takes it at the 16-yard line. Well, excuse me, Newberry comes in for Bess. And so Newberry takes it at the 16. Hawaii will go to work on that particular area of this field. Best comes on to the field as, again, the receiver. Leon Wright Jackson will be in the, in the backfield for Hawaii. 41-yard punt that time by T.J. Conley. He's from Walla Walla, Washington. Very alliterative address. First down, they put the ball at the 17. Brennan to go to work again. That's a mix-up in the patterns the last time. Brennan gives it to Wright Jackson. Jackson goes nowhere. Jackson was frantically looking for a hole, frantically looking for a lane he could run in, but it was blocked, and they're able to wall him off. Joartis Ratty led the charge for Idaho, and the loss on the play back to the 16-yard line. Well, I noticed the Vandals' defensive tackles are lined up on the far outside shoulders of the Hawaii offensive tackles in that three-man front, really trying to stop the uh, shuffle pass and any runs. Wabora is showing blitz that he backs off. Brennan throws. That is incomplete. Thrown behind Malcolm Lane. Malcolm Lane taking the place today of Jason Rivers. Rivers is suited up, and he did participate in pregame uh, warm-ups, but he has not played in this game. Because of injury, Stanley Franks covering on the play. And it is third down and 11. And uh, right now, the way the Warriors are playing, it's really allowing the Idaho crowd to get back into the game and make some noise. Good adjustments at halftime for this Idaho defense. So another third down challenge. Brennan with time, with time. Brennan finally is sacked. Down he goes. Oh, he had all kinds of time that time. All kinds. The clock was ticking on him, and he could not, he could not find a receiver. Ben Alexander there coming in. He had plenty of time, Jim. I mean, just time after time, and just the coverage downfield was good. Ben Alexander got there and made the sack. Punting out of his end zone now is Tim Grasso. Ben Alexander, first sack. There's the punt. By Grasso taken on the 40 yard line by Shiloh, uh, Shiloh Kale. And Shiloh gets bounced around. Down he goes. We may have a flag on the play. We do. Francis Maka again on the special teams. So a 10 yard return by Kale. There's no foul on the play for a block in the back. First down, University of Idaho, media timeout. So we'll take this break because referee Ethan told us to. This guy's a proven veteran and a big game pitcher. He says he tweaked his back and needs to go on the DL. He needs to go on the DL. Oh, please, will you give me a break? The guy is a wuss. He pitches once every five days. He's in the worst division in baseball. He is a spoiled, pampered softy. Easy on the cuticles. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning. This September, get ready for America's next great team. ESPN presents the FIFA Women's World Cup. Abby Wambach and Christine Lilly lead number one ranked Team USA into China for a shot at glory. The time is now. The world is their stage. The 2007 FIFA Women's World Cup, September, live on ESPN and ESPN2. Jorge. Yeah. What's going on with your hat, man? What's wrong with my hat, man? 
It doesn't look like a ball player's hat. I mean, it looks all brand new, you know? Just come out of the box. <laughs> I'm a catcher, man. I, I never had to wear that thing. You gotta bring this thing in. Hey, Wally! Wally! Hey! It's not what you think! This look at the UH record book is sponsored by Public Storage with eight convenient locations in Hawaii. Do you see the numbers? And the rating, Jason Rivers currently third, but moving up. Enderley throws, that's a hit in the air and then intercepted. Coming to the near side and turning the corner down the near side and really belted out of bounds is Keao Monte. Keao Monte out of St. Louis School, 5'11 junior, in the right place at the right time. I mean, that was the tip drill that they do every day. Yep, the ball was tipped by the receiver right into Kao's hands. Good heads up play. Fourth interception of the day for Enderley. Flowers was able to uh, hit Monte out of bounds, and it will be first down for Hawaii. Into the game for Hawaii as the wide receiver is Salas. Greg Salas. He's flanked to the far side. To the near side is Hawthorne. Brennan back to work. Brennan throws. He throws for Salas, and it is picked off. Picked off by Vobora. He comes back up the field. Vobora still on his feet, finally hit down. It's, and it's not Vobora, it's uh, Shiloh Kale. Well, that was a good job by the Vandal defense from start to finish. They ran that zone blitz off the Warriors' left-hand side. Linebacker scraped over, got in Colt's face. Colt threw the ball. Shiloh played it, timed it perfectly. The jump in front of the receiver for the interception. So it was Kale. Kale went up. There was possibilities here. But Kale really made up some uh, yardage and was able to pick it off right in front of Salas. And then Kale started back upfield. He's a tough guy. First down for Idaho. Ball is given to Jackson. Jackson running, still on his feet. Out all the way over the 40 yard line. Tell you what Idaho is starting to do. They're starting to reel in Hawaii's momentum. Mario, let's see. Desmond Thomas made the stop. Nice job by Jackson. You can see why he's their number one runner. Right there, stepping over two players, getting a first down, something that the Vandals need to string a few of those in a row. Deontay Jackson, 111 yards against Northern Illinois, 113 against Washington State, 214 against Cal Poly, and 96 against the number one team in the country, USC. Enderley throws long. It is way over the intended receiver, Eric Greenwood. That looked like a misread all the way, Jim. Number one, Greenwood cut inside, and uh, the ball was thrown outside. It was just a misread. Greenwood, big target at 6'6". Six, six. That'll bring up second down. And one thing about uh, Deontay Jackson. Jackson, even though he is far from being 100%, you can see why he leads the whack in rushing. Brian, rather, uh, Jason Bird is back at single setback. Second down and 10 from the 43. This is Bird to the 45, rolls to the 46-yard line. That'll bring up third down and long for Idaho. Hawaii putting in an extra defensive back. There you see Purcell coming off the field. Amani Purcell has a sack in the game. Third down and eight for Idaho. 8-10 left to play in the third period. From the shotgun, Enderley. Enderley chased out of the pocket and sacked by Illamimian. Great job by the Warriors. That was a twist stunt up front with a late delayed blitz by Solomon. Got in there to make the sack. And credit the secondary. Enderley could find no one. So for Illamimian, that's his first sack of the year. He leads in tackles for Hawaii. Coming into this game with 41, a loss of 11. So TJ Conley will punt. Devon Bess is deep. 
Bess will return it from the 21. Bess trying to, nope, it's going to try to go the other way. Can't do it. Back to the 20. Down he goes. Bobora just would not give up on him. And Bobora, the ubiquitous one for Idaho, he's been all over the place. So we'll take this break from Moscow, Idaho. David Bobora with another stop. Oh, he goes back in business when we. Unbelievable. What's that? These athletes, some of the things they demand. Uh, who do these guys think they are? Lavender scented candles, organic fat free tofu burgers, an autographed poster of Nancy Kerrigan. Those aren't demands, those are necessities. There's a difference. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning. Saturday Night Football on ABC. All season long on ABC and ABC HD. College football lives here on ESPN. And to see it all, you need the ESPN Game Plan Pay-Per-View Package with key matchup view provider. Games also available on ESPN360.com. Receive updates, ticket discounts, special offers, and more each week by signing up for email. To register, visit hawaiiathletics.com and click on the H mail button. It's easy and it's free. First down for Hawaii at the 22. Brennan steps up in the pocket, throws, crossing pattern, and fails to connect with Devon Bess. Boy, in the first half, that was the hot play. Chris Smith covering on the play for Idaho. All of a sudden, Hawaii's having carburetor trouble. Well, you know, that's the sixth pass that's been a little bit behind the receiver. And you just got to think it's just a, maybe a reps and a timing issue. You know, Colt missed most all the practices last week. And even this week uh, had to wear the boot and everything. Maybe the timing's still just a little bit off. Got a very productive first half here in the second half. It's cooled off considerably. Brennan. Again throws. That is incomplete. Intended for Salas on the far side. Unable to make the connection again. Good coverage by Chris Smith. Third down and ten. I can't recall the last time the Warriors have won three series and not scored. And they just need to get a first down right here. Polaris has come into the backfield. Smith. Chris Smith in that defensive secondary has come to the four. So big play here. Third down and ten from their own 22 yard line. Five defensive backs in the game and they're showing blitz. Ball is given up the middle to Polaris. Does he have the first down? He does. Great call that time. Idaho was looking pass. They were looking quick pattern. And all of a sudden, here comes Polaris plowing up the middle and bursting into the secondary. Well, that's a huge hole. That's a danger when you blitz on a draw play, but when you come up and show it at the line of scrimmage, then the offensive linemen already know what you're going to do. All they have to do is position you one way or the other. Look at that huge hole. Nice run by Kealoha Polaris. Chris Smith made the stop again for Idaho. First down at the 35 yard line. Now Brennan with a fresh. Four downs to work. Here's Polaris again. Big hole. Polaris angling for the sideline. The 40. Polaris is headbutted. Down he goes at the 44 yard line. David Vobora was there along with Ben Alexander to make the stop. Well, I got to tell you, they are definitely grinded down there. We mentioned early in the game that Musica, the nose tackle, was a player. And on that last play, John Estes and Hercules Satelli did what a zone block. Just did a great job on him and knocked him back three or four yards and still bounced up and picked up a linebacker. Nine yard pickup on that. On that play with Polaris. In motion is Grice Mullins. Salas to the left. Hawthorne to the right is the wide receiver. 
quick pass. That is complete to Bryce Mullins. Mullins still on his feet. Dives inside the 40 yard line to the 39. That is a first down for Hawaii. Ben Alexander made the stop and finally back on target that time uh, was uh, the quarterback Brennan. Brennan knew that the pressure was coming I think and really got rid of that ball quickly. Yeah that's you know that's about the best of Vandal defense or any defense has seemed to be to do against the Warriors for the first four games five games of the season. They blitzed they got there they put a little pressure on still makes a completion nice gain in the first down. Very frustrating for defense and for the defensive coordinator. 17 yard gain on that last play to Grice Mullins. And over 300 yards now for Brennan at quarterback. He throws long up the sideline. Leaping attempt by Bess. Incomplete. Or excuse me by Hawthorne. And Stanley Franks covering on the play for Idaho. Up that sideline. Brennan tried for the big one. That'll bring up second down. And 10. You know that that pass just didn't look quite as crisp or as fast as Colt normally throws. I wonder I wonder if the ankle if there's something there or if it was just a maybe a misread not by Colt necessarily. I mean Colt you know has to deal with perfection and we're not satisfied unless he's perfect. Second down and 10 Brennan again steps up in the pocket. Throws that is complete to Bess. He steps out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Bess is going crazy. He's driving the Idaho defense crazy. Rayon Williams finally made the stop for the Vandals. That's an 18 yard pickup. And as you were saying, Jim, that's what makes Colt so dangerous. You know, has one play, you know, probably an average quarterback play, comes back the next play, throws an out. You know, right on the money, absolutely perfect. So Brennan comes out with the wide receivers. Brennan looking, looking, throws. That is complete to Malcolm Lane. And Lane knifes inside the 10 all the way to the six yard line. What is interesting here was Malcolm Lane was playing on the left side the whole game. Now with solace on the left side Lane gets a chance to go back to the more familiar right side. And now you're wondering of those passes that are thrown a little bit behind. Maybe it's not Colt. Maybe it was Malcolm and uh, coach Jones picked up on that and moved Salas over to the left side where he's more familiar as the backup and put Malcolm on the right side. David Wabora again making the tackle for Idaho. Wabora must be considered already in the top of the Western Athletic Conference. He is first team all whack. From 06. In motion is best. Ball is given to Polaris. Good blocking. Polaris is able to knife inside the five. Stanley Franks able to come in from his cornerback position and offer the opposition. The ball is on the five. So it will be second down and goal to go for Hawaii. Three yard gain for Polaris. Good blocking at the inception of the play. And then Franks came in to hold down the yardage. The potential yardage gained by Polaris. Now, under center, and you don't see this very often, under center is Brennan. Brennan, Polaris, nice for the end zone. Did he get in? Waiting for the sign. Boy, Apparently that looked, not. That looked like he was in. He sure did give it a great effort. It's like on the one inch line. Polaris got crunched. By Shiloh Kale. Very close to the touchdown. It was a good good mark by the officials. Good, good call. So now the ball is as close to the line as you can probably get. Polaris remains in the backfield, and we see what Brennan does now under center. Brennan, quarterback sneak. That should be the touchdown. <laughs> yes. Took him a while. I was going to say, he's two yards deep in the end zone. So Hawaii scores again. And Kelly is in to kick. So on, on that particular drive, what we saw was a variation on the theme. Grasso to hold. Jake Ingram will snap. 
kick is up. And it bangs into the netting. What was really nice about that drive, Jim, was that the Warriors settled down. They do what they do. The Vandals try to blitz, try to get some pressure on Colt. Nice job of staying settled, just picking up those 10, 12, 15 yard passes, moving it all the way down the field, getting close to the goal line, running a couple times, Colt punching it in. Very, very nice job. Here's Colt punching it in right here. Pushing off those ankles. They look fine to me. And a good uh, good movement on by the offensive line. Colt wiping off. This is not what Idaho wanted. Idaho wanted to come out. And they started to be successful by stealing the momentum from Hawaii, but they were unable to score. And now Hawaii tacks on another touchdown. It is 48 to 10. So it's got to be rather demoralizing for the Vandals. And we still have three minutes and four seconds left to play in the third quarter. So Kelly will kick off. Dewey Hale he is deep. He's been returning kickoffs the whole game. And he'll have another attempt here, or will he? Chases it down in the end zone, and he starts to come out, but then decides better for it. It will be first down for Idaho on the 20 yard line. Well, Dewey made the right call there. He had to be four or five yards deep. And uh, the way the Warrior kickoff team has been covering, just put it at the 20. Let's see who comes in at quarterback now, Jim. It will be, or continue to be, Enderly. I thought Noy did a nice job there at the end of the second quarter. Came in and uh, had some energy. First down for Idaho. Single setback is Deontay Jackson. He's a darter. He is quick. Gets the handoff. Looking into the secondary. And finally the linebackers converge on him. And he's thrown to the turf. The team tackling there. Uh, Solomon Elabimian, the middle linebacker. Gain of four, second down. And six yards to go for Idaho. Deontay Jackson from Warren, Arkansas. 5'8", 181 pounds, redshirt freshman. I think we're going to hear his name a lot more. I mean, he did a nice job of getting four yards there when there was nothing. And he was not expected to play. Not expected. Enderley, sideline pattern. That is complete to Maurice Shaw. And Shaw is met by Myron Newberry on the near side. Let's see where they mark it. And that's a first down. First down for Idaho. Newberry did a nice job of coverage on that play right there, right when the ball gets there. Plays his man, grabs a leg. That was a possession throw just for the first down, and they got it. Ryan Heacock is coming into the game. He is wide to the right for Idaho. They look over the middle. That is complete again to Shaw. Shaw catching it in the zone. Settled in there. Adam Leonard and Myron Newberry finally converged on him. And another excellent game for Maurice Shaw. That's enough for a first down. They move the ball to the 41 yard line. And you know, it will be first and 10. Coach Aki is uh, pretty high on Maurice Shaw. He's a freshman, two TDs last week. They really believe he's another name that you're going to hear about a lot in the future besides Jackson, number three, the tailback. So Enderley moving the team here. His team trails 48 to 10. Enderley looks over the middle, throws crossing pattern. That's complete chase down and thrown down. That was complete to Steve Brown. Making the tackle was K. Almonte, who has an interception. So a short gain on the play. They move it from the 41 yard line to the 47. And it'll bring up second down. Six yard pickup. Well, the Vandals showing a little pride right here, moving the ball. Three wide receivers. Ball is handed off. This is uh, Deontay Jackson. Jackson out in front. Finally, down he goes. There was the variation on the theme. You can definitely see Jackson has that skill and ability to move laterally at full speed as he wanders his way through 
several would be tacklers. And you have to wonder if he was 100 percent the kind of weaponry that he brings to the Vandals. That changes the personality of the team. You would think Jim because he is quick 18 yard burst for the first down. Jason Bird comes back in as limping noticeably off the field is Jackson. Eddie Williams in motion. Back to pass Enderley throws long way long incomplete threw it into the end zone that was 10 yards over the nearest receiver for Idaho Stephen Brown that'll bring up second down and 10 from the Hawaii 35. Yep Brown broke that one off underneath his route when uh, Enderley thought he was going to continue to run a streak so consequently Nathan threw it to nobody in the end zone. Coming up on the final 30 seconds of the third quarter. Williams to the far side and Shaw to the near side four wide receivers. This is the Hawaii offense. They lay it off to Bird can't hold on incomplete pass. Enderley still down. Got Enderley nailed was, was by Matt. Michael Lafayette. Lafayette came in and mashed him. That'll bring up third down and ten. What Enderley they say his best thing that he does is his composure no matter what happens he still comes back third down big play here for Idaho in motion Eddie Williams ball is kept by Enderley rolling sets throws complete first down you can hear that ball bang in there Raleigh Lumbala makes the catch Lumbala from Libreville Gabon in Africa and comes out of Calgary Alberta fifth catch of the season last year against uh, the uh, Warriors in that 68 to 10 loss he rushed three times for 24 yards so Lumbala contributes for Idaho Monte made the catch first down at the 23 13 yard gain on that last play Enderley Enderley in the pocket steps out of the trouble gets inside the 20. And finally the white shirts hurl him to the turf inside the 15. Now Idaho is driving. Enderley showing not only his versatility but his stick to itiveness. That is the end of the third period. So Idaho will try to punch it in at the other end of the Kibbe Dome. Gain of seven on that last play. Glad you're with us. Your highlights tonight were perfect. Or hey guys. Hey, hey what's up, man? We still going out tonight? Oh, definitely. It's a huge night. Stuart and John are coming too. Nice. Where should we meet? What about the lobby? No, 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 no. Lobby's no good. He'll, uh, he'll look there. I'd say parking lot. Cool. Seven o'clock. I'll be there. Well, see you, see you guys later. Oh yeah. Big night. Oh, huge. So, have you been on a lot of blind dates? Um, well, this would make one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. me too. What do you do? I'm a vet. I love animals. Really? Yeah. Where are you from? Michigan. Born and raised. Go blue! He's a proven veteran and a big game pitcher. He says he tweaked his back and needs to go on the DL. He needs to go on the DL. Oh, please, will you give me a break? The guy is a wuss. He pitches once every five days. He's in the worst division in baseball. He is a spoiled, pampered softy. Easy on the cuticles. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning. This September, get ready for America's next great team. ESPN presents the FIFA Women's World Cup. Abby Wambach and Christine Lilly lead number one ranked Team USA into China. For a shot at glory, the time is now. The world is their stage. The 2007 FIFA Women's World Cup, September, live on ESPN and ESPN2. Jorge, yeah. what's going on with your hat, man? 
What's wrong with my hat, man? I mean, it doesn't look like a ball player's hat. I mean, it looks all brand new, you know? Just come out of the box. <laughs> I'm a catcher, man. I, I never had to wear that thing. You gotta bring this thing in. Hey, Wally! Wally! Hey! It's not what you think! Hawaiian Telcom High Speed Internet is now Hawaii's fastest internet. Sign up today and get your first month free to speed up. Visit HawaiianTel.com. That was uh, Jason Bird there on uh, a variant of uh, three possible plays. Just on the dive play for Jason there. Nice job by the Warrior defense chasing him out of bounds. Adam Leonard there to wrap him up. Loss of two on the play. That brings up third down. Shaw is to the left. They put three wide receivers out to the right, including Eddie Williams. Trying to pick up that first down, keep this drive going. Enderley with time. He is going to run for it, and I believe he has it. Or does he? Oh, I think that they got him just about a yard before the marker. Boy, making up, making up ground was Carl Noah. And that will bring up fourth down. That was an interesting play to say the least because Enderley appeared to have the first down. Three yard gain it is fourth down and two. I think he actually checks up here a little bit when he sees Adam coming after him. Fourth down and two. Enderley single setback is Bird. It goes to Bird. Bird crashes into that secondary and I believe he has enough for the first down or does he? He may have fumbled the ball. People are pointing all over the place. It's going to be close. They're going to bring out the chains to measure. Hawaii saying that they held them, and Idaho says they have a fresh set of downs. That's a surprise. <laughs> That's what they always say, huh? <laughs> they coach you to say that. Yeah. That's what the coaches say, too. <laughs> And they have the first down. So Idaho keeps this drive going. We're just into the fourth period. Hawaii leading 48 to 10. But Idaho has a possibility here of tacking some points on the board. Points that have come very, very hard. And into the game comes Deontay Jackson. Jackson the single setback. The ball is on the 12-yard line. It will be Jackson. No. Jackson, they fake it to him. He gets into the open space. The ball is intercepted. And let's see, do they count it? Because the defender came down inbounds. It's Gerard Lewis, his second interception of the year. That was great concentration on Gerard's part. He actually caught the ball and looked where he was going to come down. Very nice job of concentration. Enderley made the mistake of looking and then going to his right because slipping through and all alone was Deontay Jackson on the other side of the field. So he throws, look at, watch this interception. This is very spectacular. Watch, watch him look straight down to see where he's gonna put his feet. What a great job. That's just gotta be disheartening for the Vandals. Now the Warriors need to finish the job and put it away. You have to see, check officially how many interceptions uh, uh, that uh, Enderley has thrown. He's thrown a bunch. Could be his fifth. But I, it's so many that I can't. I think you're right. Yeah, that's his I think, fifth. I think it was three at half, and that's. This play is being challenged on a coach's challenge that the receiver was out of bounds, the defender was out of bounds when he made the catch. I say he has four interceptions. Uh, speaking of Enderley, but I think that uh, the interception by Lewis is going to is going to be upheld because clearly he did not make contact with the line. Yeah, he he is both feet into me. Yes. So we'll see. He did not have contact with the line in baseball and in volleyball. The line is fair in football and in basketball. The line is out. And he was in. He was in. So, of course, that means they'll probably say he was out. 
And they because I, I tell you, this instant replay stuff, Jim, I don't get it. I've seen After how. review, video evidence confirms defender had both feet inbounds. It is a catch. First down, Hawaii. India, Idaho is charged with a team timeout. Well, it's glad to see that it works. You know, that's what, uh, that's what uh, Bob Akey had to do. He had to do that because his team marches all the way down and they give it up. So he had to do that. And he's going to have, he's going to be a very good coach here. Very good. You talk to him, you see the passion that he has. Not only himself, but his staff. And it's going to take a while. And it may not take too long a time before Idaho will have a contender in the Western Athletic Conference. They're unafraid. They'll play anybody. So Hawaii deep in their own territory. The ball is on the sixth yard line. Hand it off to Polaris. And Polaris burst out to the 10. Makes a gets a great block, makes a turn, gets out over the 30, all the way to the 35. That was all Kealoha Polaris right there. That play was shut down, shut off for no gain. And a great block by Colt Brennan to help spring him. On the left side of the screen here, watch Colt come over there, throw a block right there. And another block. That was a, a good block by Salas. Up the sideline, David Vobora finally ended the odyssey. First down. Brennan throws. That's complete to Bess. Look out. Bess is at the 50. Bess fighting off. Challengers gives ground. It will give him forward progress to midfield. Chris Smith was the first one there for Idaho. Well, that was a very nice pass hitting Devon in stride. That's when the Warrior receivers are extremely dangerous. I'm trying to get information here on officially how many receptions Bess has. Now they, they say he has 12. So 12 receptions in this game. Amazing. An amazing job. He keeps breaking free. Brennan hands the ball off to Wright Jackson. Jackson gets a block and puts his helmet down, gets inside the 45 yard line of Idaho. It's good to see uh, Leon Wright Jackson and Kayla Polaris turning into two very good running backs for the Warriors. Adam Shamian making the stop along with Vobora. So a gain on the play of close to seven. It will be second down long three for Hawaii. The ball is on the 44 yard line of, of Idaho. Four wide receivers. Showing blitz. Here they come. Brennan shovel pass. Right Jackson inside the 40. And is rolled down at the 37 yard line. Si Uam Musica again. He's played his heart out for Idaho. Idaho takes out Bobora. And I believe they put in a more defensive backs here. It's away certainly in range to go for the touchdown with the ball at the 42. Hawaii leading at 48 to 10. Brennan looking over the defense. 3 4, now 3 5 front. Eight men in the box. Again, Wright Jackson getting the block, turning the corner. Inside the 30, inside the 25. Gets help from the receiver over there. And they go all the way out of bounds through the signage and a flag is thrown. I think it might be holding on C.J. Hawthorne. It looked like it was thrown before everybody went out of bounds. Silo Keo made the tackle for Idaho. And we don't know whether it is a um, personal foul as he was out of bounds or whether, as you said, it was holding. So we're going to have to wait here. I think they're trying to decide. The officials are all huddling up. Yeah, I believe it's going to be holding. There are two fouls on the play. Or may not. Hey, holding offense number two. That penalty will be enforced 10 yards from the previous spot. 
after the ball was dead, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, late hit out of bounds. That is a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down, Hawaii. Hawaii gets a break there. We were both right. Yeah, we got him. Brayon Williams uh, called for the penalty. So Hawaii will have the ball marked off against them. And then they'll turn around and mark it off the other way. And that ball will be inside the 20, still going. First down. Now they'll put it on the, the 17. Automatic first down. We'll see Brennan, see what he does here. 10.50 left to play in the game. Hawaii in control. Leon Wright Jackson back with Brennan. Brennan, quick pass. That is fumbled in the air, then intercepted. That ball went off of Bryce Mullins. Interception by Eric Hunter. Idaho turns it around. So that's another interception. That's the fourth of this game for Brennan. We've had eight interceptions on the part of both teams when you add them up. Or is it 10? Or is it 15? We need, we need an abacus. Yeah. We need a little machine to add them up here. So we're trying to get official. Is it 10? Or is it 8? It's 10. Wow. So here comes Enderley. He's had an interesting afternoon. First down at the 20-yard line. Here's Jackson. Look at him. Jackson to the 25, out to the 27, where he gets slammed by Timo Paipuli. I agree with you, Jim. If uh, Jackson would have been in full speed from the very beginning of the game, I think the Vandal offense would have performed quite a bit better than they have so far. So Jackson remains in the game as a single setback behind Enderley. Oh, he with the four man front. Enderley to throw, checks off, he'll run. He had the first down at the 30 to the 39 yard line. Excellent decision by Enderley that time. And one of the um, linemen, I believe, for Idaho is down and concerned for him. Maybe. That's Marcus, uh, Marcus Fennell. So we'll take this break. Happy you're with us wherever you may be throughout the magnificent Hawaiian Islands looking in. Unbelievable. What's that? These athletes, some of the things they demand. Uh, who do these guys think they are? Lavender scented candles? Organic fat free tofu burgers? An autographed poster of Nancy Kerrigan? Those aren't demands, those are necessities. There's a difference. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning. Football on ABC. All season long on ABC and ABC HD. College football lives here on ESPN. And to see it all, you need the ESPN Game Plan Pay-Per-View Package. With key matchups and rivalries from major conferences, you'll get up to 12 extra games every Saturday. Order now and you'll be all set for a full season of great college football with ESPN Game Plan. ESPN Game Plan presented by Olivia. Just $129 for a limited time. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. Games also available on ESPN360.com. Find the perfect gift all year long at Big Island Candies. Click on BigIslandCandies.com. 
place your order now. So we uh, we are concerned with uh, Marcus Fennell. Fennell gingerly being helped off the field, either a knee or an ankle injury, and we wish him well. Dante Jackson still the single setback. Ball is at the 39, first and 10 for Idaho. Here's Jackson, and Jackson goes nowhere. They wall him off for a loss of two. No time Jackson couldn't turn on the afterburner. C.J. Allen Jones, number 33 for Hawaii, made the uh, made the tackle. Nice job, John Fanotti's in there. Francis Maka. Second down and 12. Second down, long yardage. Andy Williams in motion. Here's Dante. Dante trying to break into the secondary, but he's ankle tackled. So he picked up four. And Joshua Leonard in there to make the tackle for Hawaii. Porlas comes into the game. Amani Purcell comes into the game. Corliss in the defensive secondary and Amani Purcell in the defensive line. Third down and a nine yards to go. And Dante Jackson still in the backfield. Remember, he's playing with that high ankle sprain. He's limping. Pass is complete to Eddie Williams, breaking tackles. And Williams gets all the way into Hawaii territory to the 45 yard line. Eddie Williams able to get away. Michael Lau finally got to him. 13-yard pickup and a first down for Idaho. Nice job, Eddie Williams. Breaking a couple tackles, not giving up on himself. Bouncing around, getting the first down. So we've been informed that both quarterbacks now have five interceptions apiece. Five. And that makes ten. First down from the 46. And again, like a whirling dervish, Eddie Williams in motion. Ball is kept by Enderley. Sets up, throws, and that is dropped at the 41. So Eric Greenwood had his fingers on it, but never had possession. He dropped the ball. Nice job of Adam Corby, the center, coming around and laying a block on Francis Maka, allowing Enderley to get around on the outside. Second down and 10. Henderley throws. That is complete, but what a hit by Pipe Pooley. Ball is complete to Lee Smith. And Smith, boy, they just turned out the lights. Even the Idaho crowd's clapping for that. So Timo Pipefully really smacked the receiver here. I don't think he'll want to be going across the middle again anytime soon. Lee Smith credit him for holding on. Third down and nine. They're able to convert last time. Tight end sets up on the near side. The throw incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. Ball was intended for Deontay Jackson out of the backfield. Enderley couldn't get it to him, so it is fourth down. Joshua Leonard putting nice pressure on Enderley, uh, was being mugged from behind. I don't know how there wasn't a holding penalty, but it was inconsequential. I guess they're going for it, Jim. They're going for it on fourth down. Enderley with Deontay Jackson in that backfield. Jackson is very quick. Now whistle blows. Play clock has come down to zero. Yeah. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. So now instead of fourth and nine, it is fourth and 14. Are they still going to try for it? Why not? They're down 48 to 10 with seven minutes and 29 seconds left. So on a Saturday afternoon, you've got to give it the college try. Bird has gone into the backfield, replacing Deontay Jackson. Enderley back to throw. With time, chased out of the pocket, scrambling, now throws wide open to Bird. 
He's at the 30. Bird breaks a tackle. He's at the 25. That's a first down. Nice job of Enderly just staying with it, avoiding the sack, finding Bird, getting the first down. Desmond Thomas finally made the tackle for Hawaii. What credit, Idaho. Fourth and 14, and they convert. Carl Noah comes up a little slow coming off the field after that chase of Vanderly. So first down for Idaho. They have the ball at the 24-yard line of Hawaii with 7-17 left. 26-yard gain on that fourth down and long yardage. Warriors calling timeout there. Things you love about football. Contact. Contact. Accuracy. Accuracy. Teamwork. Teamwork. You're a fan. You just don't know it yet. Watch MLS Primetime Thursday, Thursday nights on ESPN2. Presented by Adidas. How long have you been up there? I don't know. I think a while. ESPN Ultimate NASCAR. Own all four volumes on DVD now. The greatest drivers. There's the checkered flag for Allen. The fastest cars. The biggest moments. Get under the hood with these fully loaded DVDs. Experience life at 200 miles per hour. ESPN Ultimate NASCAR. Own all four volumes on DVD now. This look at the passing game is sponsored by Aloha Airlines, a proud supporter of UH Sports. For reservations and fare specials, visit alohaairlines.com. Hawaii 369 yards through the air and Idaho 160. Ball is given to Bird and Bird goes nowhere. Tried to turn the corner and they were able to string him out and whack him down. Nice job with Joe Pierre Davis coming up on the play from his corner position. 6.59 left to play in this game. Hawaii will no doubt go to 5-0. and oh. Next week, Hawaii entertains Utah State at Aloha Stadium. Hope you can make your plans to be with us, either at the stadium or on pay-per-view. Second down and about 11. Enderley to throw, lays it off, incomplete. Was intended for Bird. Enderley just threw that too fast. Yep, Warriors came with the blitz up the middle. Enderly sensed it and wanted to get rid of it and not get hit. The Hawaii defense has certainly been able to give up some yardage, but they have been very stubborn when they get down inside the 20-yard line, what they call the red zone. And 14 of the 48 points they put on the board with those two interceptions yes. for TDs. you got to be happy with their play. The motion again is Williams. Enderly looking, looking. Enderly is grabbed. Enderly is slammed to the turf. John Funoti would not be denied. That was almost shades of WWF there. Uh, gets in there and very forcefully. Throws Enderly down to the ground. Just want to let him know. Hey, my name's John Finotti. How you doing? Finotti out of Kalihi and Farrington. 49 yard field goal attempt, loss of seven on that sack. Tino Amancio, he's had a 50 yarder. This one on its way. Amancio owns this place. He made, he made that look academic, Jim. That could have gone another 10 yards. But the question here, why? Why a field goal? Probably because they knew they weren't going to score. 
That's interesting. They were going to get a touchdown. 48-13 in the fourth quarter. I'll wait you. Good job. <clears throat> Thanks, Mr. Hey, guys, we probably should head over. Yeah, you're probably right. we got to get Coach, though. Hey, Coach. Let's go, man. we got to roll. Lee. I guess we'll meet him over there. Yeah. You know game day? Go to collegegameday.com to find out. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturdays at 10 a.m. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, 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 the ring of fire, the ring of fire. The chase for the Nextel Cup Series championship is on ABC. Sometimes the way out. This is everything to me. Is the way in. Box is my life, is what I love. On an all new season of The Contender, the road will travel through 16 dreams. I really can't be stopped. 10 weeks. This is pretty much make it or break it. Every round counts. One shot. I'll do whatever it takes. I'm not playing on losing. The Contender, an all-new season begins Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern, only on ESPN. 49-yard field goal by Tino Amancio. That makes it 48 for Hawaii, 13 uh, for Idaho. Keenan Jones, number 29, and Michael Washington, number 5, await the kickoff by Amancio. Line driver. Washington watches it go into the end zone, and Hawaii will begin at the 20. 5.42 left to play in this game. Looks like Tyler Gronke is going to go in, Jim. So Gronke will come in at, uh, at quarterback for Hawaii. Gronke, last week, 22 of 36, 285 yards, three touchdowns and two interceptions against... Uh, Charleston Southern. Warriors have the second team offensive line in there. Bryson Ginlack, Lafu Tioti Mariner, Larry Salafea, La Pepe Le Tuli, Aaron Kia across the front. Gronke hands the ball off to Wright Jackson. Jackson wedging his way, and they give him about four yards. Now he's finally brought to the turf. Hawaii will be 5-0 in the season. They will hold on definitely to their national ranking. They will be undefeated in the Western Athletic Conference at 2-0. They face Utah State next week. Hawaii will be a heavy favorite. And Hawaii will be playing at home. This is the third road game of the year. Hawaii has five this year. They will also play at San Jose State and at Nevada. Second down, about five and a half. Gronke with time, throws. That is complete to Washington. And Washington goes out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Chris Smith there to make the stop. Tyler always does a very good job on throwing that uh, flag route to the outside towards the out of bounds. Um, one of the, just one of his best throws. Almost never makes a mistake, always lays it in there for a nice game. Washington to the far side. To the near side is Malcolm Lane. 19 yard pickup on that last play. Gronke hands the ball off to Wright Jackson. He fumbles it, and Idaho may have it. They're still trying to fight for it. Wright Jackson trying to get the ball back. That's another turnover. And they are going to say Idaho. Vandals get the ball. The other ball squirted out of there while Leon was running with it. Adam Shamian credited with the fumble recovery. That ball just comes out. Actually, it's his he, own man. His own player. I think it was Aaron Kia, number 77. The ball bounced out. So Idaho with another opportunity here with time running out, 420. 
away leading 48 to 13. Idaho trying to make the score respectable. Enderley who's had a testing afternoon back there with Brian Flowers. Enderley throws that is incomplete. I don't think that's interference. Oh I don't know about that. That seemed to be a perfect collision at the time the ball got there. If it is it is so minuscule. Well, about key, uh, about the interference. The key, I didn't think there was. The, the key word was Defense, collision. Defense number there was 29. A the penalty is enforced at the spot of the foul and an automatic first down. Watch Keenan Jones here. Ah, a little bit before. See, I'm wrong again. I'm wrong again. It was close. You said it was close. Maurice Shaw was the intended receiver. The interference penalty moves the ball just out of the 35-yard line to the 36. Idaho with it. Enderley. The throw. Same pattern. That is complete to Shaw. Shaw gets the first down at the 21 yard line. Well, it looks like at most positions, the Warriors have the second team defense in there right now. Not really true with the defensive line because they've been rotating in all game long and even at the linebacker position. But you get your uh, second team defensive backs in there. Keenan Jones, Dane Porles, uh, who we have over there, uh, De is Desmond in there? First down and 10. Ball is given up the middle. With it is Brian Flowers. Good running room. Finally angles to the outside and is tackled. Flag on the play. Dane Porles there to make the stop. Holding. Offense number 77 10 yard penalty remains first down Mikey Opate for Idaho called for the holding and they'll move it back Corliss out of San Diego California University of San Diego High School. So Hawaii definitely has uh, their players who practice much and play little getting an opportunity here in the fourth. Trying to hold Idaho off the boards. Eric Greenwood into the game as a receiver. Ball is thrown. Wide open is Williams. Touchdown. Eddie Williams caught that ball in a field turf vacant lot. Yeah, I don't know if that was Ryan Kaomaka or Dane Porlis. I don't know if Ryan fell down at the beginning of the play, but one of those two guys had to be over there and nobody was there. You see uh, Keomaka chasing. But Eddie Williams, who has been in motion all day, his 15th reception, his second touchdown of the season. Kick is up, and it is good. And it is now 48 to 20. 3 21 left to play. Hawaii leading Idaho. ESPN Game Plan is presented by Olivia, award-winning high-definition television. about baseball is how great it is to talk about baseball. I just love watching them on the rubber. Up to the minute highlights, breakdown, and spirited commentary. When you're prepared like that, you're a winning player. Baseball tonight, every night on ESPN. First, there were the pajamas your uncle got you when you were born. After that, it was your first glove. Your first real glove. Next, it was sitting in the kitchen asking your dad about the designated hitter. But then, then you saw what is to this day the bluest sky and the greenest grass you could ever see. And that's when it really started.
35 yard pass touchdown Eddie Williams the receiver touchdown pass from Nathan Enderley and Eddie Williams kind of had a free ride on that because no one was around him kicking off is Vincente Rico and he rips it into the end zone and over the head of Michael Washington a reminder that Central Pacific Bank sponsors the loyalty award for every touchdown Hawaii scores Central Pacific Bank fiercely loyal banking Hawaii leading 48 to 20 still 321 left to play Tyler Gronke will go back in at quarterback and we'll see if if Hawaii can score one more time when you're scored upon good teams don't like that Malcolm Lane is wide to the right Williams is to the left Leon Wright Jackson low snap from center and it's fallen upon by Gronke. That was actually a good job by Tyler. He couldn't get a handle on it. Just lay down on top of it. You don't want to turn it over. Not this not on your own 20 yard line 15 yard line. So that low snap and he was able uh, to handle it. That's Larry Safaya. He's actually the starting right guard. But he's the backup center for John Estes. Yeah. And he dribbled it back there. Something he's got to work on. That's why he's in there. Loss on the play. This second down and 15. Gronke checking, looking, hit, fumbles the ball. And let's see. Somebody recovers it for Hawaii. It wasn't Gronke. Well, as in the play before, even though it wasn't pretty, it kept the clock running. They fumbled it right there. The clock's still running. Well, going through his progressions, going through his progressions, seemed to have time. But then all of a sudden, showing up was Musica. Jonas Sataraka. Yeah. Musico is also there, Jim. Tyler Gronke able to recover it. Gronke again inside his five yard line shovel pass that ball goes out to Wright Jackson and Wright Jackson carries over the 15 to the 16 yard line Chris Smith halted his progress 147 left the play in this game. Well as we see Grasso come out here to punt I got to tell you Jim my take on this is 48 to 20 five interceptions you know Hawaii's got a pretty good team I mean we as I said in the opening how good we don't know. But when you can go on the road away a long way on the road and have five turnovers and still score 48 points 14 of them off defense at least six turnovers with the fumble. That's correct. So I, you know that's what good teams do. They overcome mistakes especially on the road win a game like this. Grasso punting. And here is K.O. K.O. is really the Popeye of this team. I mean he leaps over a man gets inside the 40 all the way to the 36. Well, that guy eats spinach. <laughs> he eats spinach. Well you know and the thing you like Jim is what you were saying when you met with Coach Aki yesterday. He's trying to create have good kids here get them to graduate do the right things. And the thing you love about the Vandals right now is they're not quitting. No. I mean it's 48 20 and 57 seconds left and they're playing with all heart. So here comes Idaho. Brian Noy is back in at quarterback, replacing Enderley. Flowers is back there with him. Double wide receiver to the left. First down from the 36. Noy to throw. Noy in trouble. Noy goes down. Rocky Savainaya. Yes, Savainaya. Very happy about that sack. 6'2, 300 pounder out of Eva Beach went to. Aya High School. He was a Naali. Second down. Another sack for this Hawaii defense. The statistics of this game will be very interesting. Hawaii has given up a lot of yardage as far as interceptions and turnovers are concerned. But then again, so has Idaho. And what it's done, it's canceled each other out. Bank of Hawaii presents our choice for this afternoon's most valuable players for Hawaii Devon best 12 receptions 162 yards and a touchdown 
Idaho, Eddie Williams, 101 total yards, and Williams with two touchdowns, one receiving, and the other, the end around for 18 yards early in the game to tie it at seven. We know Jim last week after the game, Coach Jones said, oh, that was a good, ugly win. I'm sure he probably feels the same way about tonight's game. Well, Brennan, 30 of 49, 369 yards, three touchdowns, five interceptions. He came into the game with only two for the season. Noy throws long. He wants Williams again, and that is almost intercepted and then kicked away. Eric Robinson. Eric Robinson just coming into the game. You know, he almost kicked it off his foot back to the receiver. Robinson out of Dallas, Texas, 5'11 junior out of Navarro Junior College. Here comes Idaho trying again on third down, third down long yardage. Third and 15 from the 41. Noy to throw, four-man pattern, throws long up the far sideline. That ball is incomplete. It was intended for Lee Smith. Keenan Jones covering on the play for Hawaii. That stops the clock with 33 seconds left. It is fourth down. Idaho has one more shot. Hawaii will win it. Hawaii will remain undefeated. Hawaii will remain undefeated in the way. They may get too much time. Coming to the line. Eric Greenwood out to the far side. Shaw to the near side. Noy throws. That is complete to Greenwood at 6-6. And Greenwood just gets rolled over. I mean, he's there taking shots. 23.5 seconds left. Idaho gives it up on downs. Hawaii will take over, take a knee, and we'll all go back on the incredible crowded airport. Yeah, how, how did they get any more people on the airplane than they do nowadays? I, I swear there was live chickens in the overhead. I swear. One of the Hawaii players is down and we're concerned, we're concerned for him. So we'd like to thank everybody contributing to this uh, telecast here in Moscow, Idaho. Our director is uh, Dan Schmidt. And our player identification guys who have written books about it and are very, very good. Our statistician is working on a doctorate in astrophysics. We've had a great crew here, huh? They've done a great job. Thank you. So concern here, we're trying to find out who this is. It looks like a zero for the last number, but I'm not sure. See June Jones stoically thinking about maybe negatives in this game. His team did take control. His team did uh, seize it and then literally run away in the first half, leading 41 to 10 at halftime, and then scored the first touchdown of the second half to seal it. But uh, we wish. Uh, we knew who this was down on the oh, turf. John Fanotti. John Fanotti. So concern for John Fanotti and his family. I'd like to say hi to uh, Auntie Marie Payne watching this telecast with all her friends, relatives, neighbors, and people who just happened to walk by in Kailua in her garage. <laughs> I'm sure there's a few garages around Oahu and the rest of the state today like that. 23 seconds left. And we'll just take a knee. And Hawaii then can make its way back across the Pacific. Play Utah State next week. And there's the game. Hawaii wins it by a score of 48 to 20. I want to thank everybody for contributing to this. Ina Iamai Anu Kapuwan. And we'll be back after this.
guy's a proven veteran and a big game pitcher. He says he tweaked his back and needs to go on the DL. He needs to go on the DL. Oh, please, will you give me a break? The guy is a wuss. He pitches once every five days. He's in the worst division in baseball. He is a spoiled, pampered softy. Easy on the cuticles. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning. This September, get ready for America's next great team. ESPN presents the FIFA Women's World Cup. Abby Wambach and Christine Lilly lead number one ranked Team USA into China. For a shot at glory, the time is now. The world is their stage. The 2007 FIFA Women's World Cup, September, live on ESPN and ESPN2. Jorge. Yeah. What's going on with your hat, man? What's wrong with my hat, man? I mean, it doesn't look like a ball player's hat. I mean, it looks all brand new, you know? Just come out of the box. <laughs> I'm a catcher, man. I, I never had to wear that thing. You got to bring this thing in. Hey, Wally. Wally. Hey, it's not what you think. ESPN Game Plan is presented by Olivia, award-winning high-definition television. the highlights. There may be an asterisk right next to Barry Bonds. Beneath the surface. Which of these guns would an athlete be drawn to? Outside the Lines, hosted by Bob Lee. Sundays at 9.30 a.m. and weekdays at 3 on ESPN. Get in the zone. Auto zone. Do you drive in stop-and-go traffic or during extreme temperatures? This is his second chance at scoring. Newberry comes down the field. He knows it's a horse race. Gets some help. Goes back to the inside. As uh, he gets away from Bird and then scores. He was penalized for that leap, but he'll take it. Oh, well, he played very, very well. They are going to do the ha -ha at the end of this game. So I turn to you. Uh, coming back and being effective, running up the yards, throwing touchdown passes, but five interceptions. I mean, it's good and it's bad today uh, for uh, Colt, uh, Colt Brennan. Well, you know, on the road, you want to win the game. They got that done. They're 5-0. It's the best start since the early 1980s. Got to be happy about that. You know, Cole Brennan will bounce back. He was a little bit rusty, maybe, missing that one game last week with Charleston Southern, but he's a great quarterback, and they won 48-20, bottom line. And they're still undefeated at 5-0. and They're undefeated in the conference at 2-0. Next week, we'll have Utah State come calling. So next Saturday, the Warriors return home to Aloha Stadium for a Western Athletic Conference matchup with the Utah State Eggs. We hope you can join us at Aloha Stadium or live on pay-per-view. Until then, for Jim Donovan and our great crew, this is Jim Leahy wishing you well. This has been another exclusive sports presentation of K5, the home team. Malama Pomu, Keahi, E. Keahi. Six chance to win cool football prizes. Plus, go for more and win even bigger. A VIP trip to the ACC or Big 12 championship game and a chance to throw for a million dollars. It all begins when you go for a bottle of Dr. Pepper. Then go online and enter your code for a chance to win at drpepper.com. Because when it's college football season and you're drinking Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. In sports, there's always a winner and always a loser. Log on to ESPNRadio.com for the Choose to Lose Challenge with Nutrisystem and tell us who will come up short in the next big game. Then find out how you can win a 28-day supply of Nutrisystem Men's Favorite Package. That's four weeks of breakfast, lunches, dinners, and desserts. Plus, winners receive an iPod Shuffle and an ESPN Radio Messenger Bag. Log on to ESPNRadio.com today and choose to lose with Nutrisystem. 
This is the sound of ESPN Radio. Why am I the only talk show host that makes sense? I'm trying to go with that. Do I think? Do I not think? I suppose what I'm sitting here saying to you is I am accusing you of eating my banana. <laughs> the, sound, the sound. I wake up with Mike and Mike in the morning. And it's ESPN Radio all day. Is vegetable a fruit or a vegetable? It's never more. The sound. sound. ESPN Radio. Given your special needs, a different neighborhood might be better. Sorry, no vacancies. We just haven't changed the sign. None of our Spanish-speaking realtors are here right now. We don't have that many properties with ramp you access. You are from New Orleans, I'm right? Yeah, I'm afraid understand. we don't have any. I feel horrible about the hurricane, exactly right but when nothing is open, just nothing is open. might not be the well right so so We're actually not sure. I'm afraid your family is if you're one of the many hurricane victims who hears these kinds of excuses, the storm isn't over. If you are looking for a place to call home, remember, housing discrimination based on race, disability, or against families with children is illegal. Report it by calling 1-800-669-9777. There is hope, because there is help. Call 1-800-669-9777. A public service announcement brought to you by the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Ad Council. Hi, friends. Have you ever seen other people experiencing interstate highway ditch and thought, that could be me? Well, now, thanks to modern realities of speed and distraction, interstate highway ditch can be yours. Here's how. Next time you're in a car and the driver's driving recklessly, simply say nothing. That's right. Let them speed around corners and drift across lanes. Ignore that little feeling in the pit of your stomach, and you too can experience interstate highway ditch. Interstate Highway Ditch has been associated with rollovers, passenger ejection, and death, and therefore may not be suitable for everyone. Passengers who wish to avoid Interstate Highway Ditch can do so by following simple steps, like trusting their instincts, speaking up, and telling their friends to slow down. In the real world, there is no spokesperson to prevent reckless driving. There's only you. Speak up. Act now. Paramedics are standing by. This has been a message from the Ad Council. For more information, go to youarethespokesperson.com. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Doug Brown. College football aplenty right now on ABC TV. The number one USC Trojans in a battle at Washington, tied with the Huskies. No score late first quarter in Seattle on ESPN HD. Auburn leading number four Florida in the swamp, seven nothing. That one four minutes to go in the first quarter. On ESPN2, it's number eight Ohio State leading Minnesota seven to nothing in the final seconds of the first quarter of that one. Final stages of the ball game in Jacksonville, Florida State leads Alabama 21 to 14. Just a minute left to go in that ball game. Finals earlier today in the Big 12, Oklahoma and Texas both lose in preparation for the Red River rivalry next weekend. Colorado beats the Sooners 27-24 on a last play field goal by Kevin Eberhardt. And Texas gets smoked at home by Kansas State 41-21. The Pac-10 showdown at Autzen Stadium today. The Cal Bears get their first win in Eugene in 20 years, beating the Oregon Ducks 31-24 for Coach Jeff Tedford. In the first half, we really tried to establish a run, and they did a nice job of shutting that down. So we came out in the second half, started throwing a little bit more on early downs and making some big plays. And uh, Nate did a nice job, and, and uh, Deshaun had a big day. But I thought the, the team played very, very well. Deshaun sure did have a big day. Wide out to Deshaun Jackson, 11 catches, 161 yards, and two touchdowns for the Bears, who go to 5-0. As do the Wisconsin Badgers. They squeak by Michigan State 37-34. Maryland knocks off number 10 Rutgers 34-24. Georgia Tech beats 13th ranked Clemson 13-3. A final just in, number 19 Hawaii rolls at, at Idaho 48-20. And another final, Illinois knocks off Penn State 27-20. Freshman wideout Regis Ben with a 90-yard kick return for a score. And he caught a 29-yard touchdown pass. To baseball, the Rockies trying to stay alive for a playoff spot. Come up with four runs in the first inning at Coors Field. They lead the Diamondbacks 4-0 now in the second. Matt Holliday's two-run double, the big hit. 
Brewers knocked off the Padres earlier 4-3 to three in 11 innings. That prevented the Padres from clinching a playoff spot. Mets and Phillies are back in a tie for first in the East. The Mets smoked the Marlins 13 to nothing. John Main, seven and two thirds, no hit innings. He gets the win. Nationals beat the Phillies four to two, and the Cubs take the Reds four nothing in Cincinnati. American League, the Yankees just scored ten runs in the fourth inning. They lead the Orioles eleven to six in the fourth. The Twins lead the Red Sox four two in the seventh. Royals lead the Indians three two in the fourth. Earlier today, the Angels beat the A's three to two in Oakland. It's the final day of baseball's regular season as October awaits. Sunday baseball brought to you by Excedrin Back and Body on ESPN Radio. Don't know the score. The score. Check the board. This is College Game Day Scoreboard. He's Mel Kiper Jr. I'm Freddie Coleman. It is the College Game Day scoreboard. It is delivered by the new AT&T. We got our GOATs of the week because I'm sure Mel has one, and I have one. We have our players of the week. Mel has one, maybe two. I have one, maybe two. Before we get to that, breaking down our game of the day. Number six, California, they beat number 11, Oregon, 31-24 to because nobody in the second half could stop Deshaun Jackson of California. And Longshore under on second and six. Back to throw. The quick throw out to Jackson. He'll have a first down and get down the sideline. He's going to score. High steps it in, and Jarris Bird went for the tackle and missed him. And the Bears take the lead, 23-17. to Jerry Allen on the call on the Oregon Sports Network. California wins it 31-24. to Cal had lost seven straight at Autzen Stadium before they won today's game. They now lead the overall series 38-30 to with two ties. And in the game, Nate Longshore suffered an injury. He did come back, but his ankle and his knee, they were heavily taped. Jeff Tedford, the coach of California, mentioned his up got the update to us about the status of Nate Longshore. Well, in the first half, we really tried to establish a run, and they did a nice job of shutting that down. So we came out in the second half, started throwing a little bit more on early downs and making some big plays. And uh, Nate did a nice job, and and uh, Deshaun had a big day. But I thought that the team played very, very well. Well, they didn't single him most of the day. They did some, um, but they, they do a nice job of mixing up their coverages. They're, they're not an easy team to, to pick apart like that. Um, but Nate found him when he was singled, and, and it was nice. No, no, we're going to get an x-ray on his ankle right now. Uh, he said it doesn't feel as bad as when he broke his other one, so we're just going to keep our fingers crossed that the x-rays are negative and that the, the bye week will help him. He's on the right side. It's his right ankle, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am. But, you know, that had a huge significance right there, so they had to get it right. I understand that. But uh, we knew when we saw the, the replay on the big screen that we didn't think there was any way that could be overcome. Jeff Tedford, the head coach of Cal, talking about his team's victory, the status of Nate Longshore, his quarterback, who suffered an injury in the second half. So, Mel, you look at what Cal was able to do. They lost seven straight at Austin. They hadn't won there probably since Ronald Reagan was president of this country. Yet they go in there after being down 10 to 3 at halftime. But in the second half, a guy who I think is the best offensive player in the Pac 10, Deshaun Jackson, he and Nate Longshore and Justin Forsett really stepped up on offense. Oh, uh, big time, Freddie. And Alex Mack anchoring that offensive line. The junior did a great job as well. And Deshaun Jackson had been very quiet. He was only averaging 8.9 yards a catch going into this game. He averaged 18 a catch last year. Today, 11 catches, 160 yards, and two touchdowns. I mean, he came ready to put on a show. And for Oregon, when you have Nate Longshore hobbled, okay, even Kevin Riley had to come in, the redshirt freshman, to hand the ball off for a play. You got a hobbled quarterback, you take it into overtime, and you got a pretty good shot. They had numerous chances, and they had one great opportunity, and Cameron Colvin coughed it up at the end. So Oregon has nobody to blame for the way this game ended but themselves. They could have taken this game into overtime, and with a quarterback far less than 100%, Nate Longshore, Oregon would have had a great shot to win it, but it never got to overtime, and Cal with a huge victory, and for them, a benefit, a week off next yep. Saturday to get healthy and get those young those young kids that had some, some uh, bumps and bruises back on the field and wait to see what the uh, end result is with the injury to Nate Longshore. Hopefully it's not serious, because if it is, all of a sudden uh, their season could come apart very
very quickly. A lot of people thought that Oklahoma ranked third in the country. They were going to have a week off called the Colorado Buffaloes, and in the third quarter with Oklahoma, Oklahoma up 24-7, that looked to be the case. But game tied at 24 apiece, two seconds left. Kevin Eberhardt looking to be the hero in Boulder. Now, watch out. The kick is up. It is on its way. And it is good. Good. As time expires, Colorado wins 27-24. Bedlam here in Boulder as the Buffaloes have upset number three Oklahoma. Mark Johnson on KOA and Bob Stoops after the game talked about what really killed the Oklahoma Sooners. Just can't have those things happen and some of the, the really poor, foolish penalties we had just kill you. And that's we're not a very smart team right now. <laughs> well, they were smart early on, but today, Mel, down the stretch, it seemed that I don't know how much of the fact that the altitude got to them because they seemed to tire in that third and fourth quarter. But the penalties didn't help them. But and you thought there was some a couple of dubious coaching decisions that probably led to Oklahoma getting their first loss of the season. Well, a couple of things, right? I think when you look at it first of all, and you say, okay, you have on the kickoff, you got some timeouts, you guarantee yourself a kickoff if you call a timeout. Well, you didn't get that opportunity, and then not to ice the kicker who was had missed four field goals already this year. Remember, he took over Everhart did for Mason Crosby, who's now with Green Bay in the NFL. So you figure, okay, do what the NFL has done, do what you know, happened with Oakland against them with Denver, and do what happened for Oakland against Cleveland last week and iced the kicker. They didn't do it, and they didn't allow themselves any time to get a kickoff return and maybe have a shot to get a field goal to tie it. So I thought, late, why not use that timeout? Bob Stoops opted not to, and the field goal went through the uprights, and when it did, the game was over. There was no time left. He's Mel Kuyper Jr. I'm Freddie Coleman. It is the College Game Day scoreboard on ESPN Radio. Before we get to our Player of the Week, Mel, let's get to our Goat of the Week. What player did not step up and do what he was supposed to do according to you i gotta go back to that oregon game at the end i mean you have cal you have an injured quarterback you have dennis dixon a quarterback who had not thrown interception throws two picks in the fourth quarter cameron colvin when dixon did get him down there Colvin's got the ball. He's at the half-yard line, tries to reach it over, fumbles it out of the end. You can't do that. So Cameron Colvin and Dennis Dixon together kind of imploded in the fourth quarter to prevent Oregon from having a chance to take that game into overtime. Yeah, my go to the week, I think I was going to give it to one player, but I'm going to give it to a whole offense, and that is the Penn State offense. And their 27-20 loss to the Illinois today. They had a chance to really put this game away, but poor red zone execution doomed Penn State. They had to settle for field goals on two possessions inside the 20. They haven't scored a touchdown on their last five trips in the red zone. And when they had a chance, we saw Anthony Morelli. He threw a pick. They fumbled it a couple of times. So as much as we want to put it on the quarterback in this situation, Mel, I think we have to put it on the Penn State offense against Illinois. They're ranked number 21 in the country, meaning Penn State. You have a chance to get the ball in the red zone. You can't come away with zero points or three points. you got to come away with seven, and that's exactly what they did not do. Exactly. And Morelli, I'll tell you, you're taking sacks when he shouldn't have, fumbling the ball after he got a first down and, and picks it, you know, on bad reads and bad throws. Uh, you know, Anthony Morelli certainly uh, did not perform anywhere close to the level you would expect. So we give you the bad. It's time to give you the good, courtesy of our players of the week the college game day scoreboard on espn radio salutes the player of the week no, we had a lot of great performances. One stood out for you. Who was it? Who was your player of the week? I'm going to surprise you a little, Freddie. I know we talked a lot of Deshaun Jackson, what have you. I know you love what he did, and so do I. But I look at Michigan. The Wolverines, they've got a shot now with an easy game next week against Eastern Michigan. Go to 4-2. and two. They had trailed Northwestern 16-7 to seven at the half. Trailed 16-14 at the end of the third quarter. Chad Henney, though, hot hand. Three touchdown passes. No picks. Coming off the injury list. 18-27. 193 yards. Mario Manningham with 10 catches. Jake Long did a great job at left tackle once again. I'm going to give it to the Michigan offense. Jake Long at left tackle, Manningham at wide receiver, and Chad Henney back off the injury list at quarterback. He did a good job today directing that football team. As I said, they go to 3-2. and two. They'll be 4-2 and two after next week, then get into back to the Big Ten schedule and have a chance to maybe capture a Big Ten title after that rough start. Yeah, it was a rough start today for the University of Michigan, down 16-7 to seven in Northwestern. After that, all Michigan, they scored 21 and answer points. They beat Northwestern 28-16. My player of the week happening in an upset. Number 13, Clemson at one seven straight going in, going down to Atlanta to take on Georgia Tech. They lose 13-3 to to Shard Choice, did his damage on the running side. But to me, my player of the week is on the other side. Philip Philip Wheeler was terrific. Seven tackles, four sacks, broke up a pass as well. 
constantly got pressure on the Clemson offense. They couldn't run the ball effectively. Total offense, 2 28. They only had 74 yards rushing. He had four of their six sacks. I thought today, Mel, Phillip Wheeler was the best player in the field. He was the real key to that upset of Georgia Tech beating Clemson 13-3. Athletic kid with great speed. He's been a heck of a football player. He's protected by a very good defensive line, Freddie, and uh, certainly a heck of a job there. You look at next week, Georgia Tech at Maryland. Maryland, a huge victory at Rutgers today. Yeah, Maryland getting that victory. Rutgers ranked 10th in the country. Maryland beating them 34-24. to It was 27-24. Rutgers would get the ball back, trying to tie the game or at least score the winning touchdown. Four plays later, they were done. Then a play after that, they really were done. Turner under center, ball the deep man, handoff for ball, running to the right, bounces to the outside, to the 10, to the 5, and ball finds the corner for the Maryland touchdown. Rutgers was taking all kinds of risks, and the Terrapins score on the touchdown run, and they have extended their lead to 33-24 with 2.04 to go. Chris Carlin on the Rutgers Radio Network, and after losing a 24-3 lead in the game last week to Wake Forest, Maryland pulls the upset. They knock off number 10 Rutgers by a count of 34-24. to Earlier this week on the Herd with Colin Cowherd, ESPN College Football Voice, and Pro Football Hall of Famer Dan Fouts was on the show. If you missed it, be sure to sign up to be an ESPN Radio Insider, and you can download it right now. Mike and Mike, the Herd, the Sports Bash, and more on demand for whenever you want to listen on your computer, iPod, or MP3 player. Insider details at ESPNRadio.com. Mel Trapdoor Saturday was great. We'll see what happens next week on Showdown Saturday. Can't wait, partner. Good stuff. We'll talk to you next week. Right, it's always fun. we got a lot of football still to go tonight, pal. That is true, and a lot of football still to go in the season. Game night is coming up next with Andy Gresh and somebody named Freddie Coleman. For Troy Clarity, as well as Andy but Dan Katz, this is the Cal State Game Scoreboard on ESPN Radio. I think it all goes Every football fan like me, Mike Tirico, knows when a defense needs a game-saving play, they think interception. If only they had UPS technology under their pads, they'd win for sure. With UPS Delivery Intercept, you can return, redirect, or hold almost any package. That's why UPS is sponsoring the Delivery Intercept Challenge. Visit UPS.com slash challenge to post and vote on amateur videos of great hometown interceptions. You can win cash, school donations, and memorabilia. UPS, what can Brown do for you? See UPS.com slash challenge for official rules and details. No purchase necessary. Entry due by 12307. Additional restrictions apply. So Metro Financial wants to know, what are you reaching for? A secure retirement with income you won't outlive? A way to provide health benefits to your employees? Or being able to send your kids to any college they choose? At Symmetra Financial, we've been helping people reach for great things for over 50 years. Talk to your financial advisor or visit Symmetra.com. That's S-Y-M-E-T-R-A dot com. Symmetra Financial. Reach for great things. Symmetra Life Insurance Company, 777-108 Avenue Northeast, Bellevue, Washington. We're coming to you with the ESPNRadio.com internet feed straight out of Bristol. Keep listening. Excitement. Excitement. Alex Rodriguez hits it out. Suspense. Suspense. Let the celebration begin in game two. The Gators have shocked the world. Passion. Action. Got ahead of Snow. Three on one. Atkins back. It's James from the lane. And the cylinder with a right hand slammer. Newsworthy. Newsworthy. Number seven. Barry Bob stands alone. Bringing the best of the world of sports to you. ESPN Radio. Remember that Monday when you got your wife to watch the game so she would consider letting your son play for the school team? And how impressed she was by the sportsmanship shown on the field? And how she was just about to sign the permission slip when Teddy Bruschi leveled Chris Chambers and she ran out of the room in horror? Remember that? Well, this Monday when Tom Brady and Carson Palmer lead their high-powered offenses into battle in Cincinnati, you'd better distract her when the ball's thrown over the middle. ESPN Monday Night Football, Patriots versus Bengals at 8.30 Eastern. Is it Monday yet? Energy Hog the team. I want you to infiltrate the house and waste some energy. We'll just sneak into these leaky windows. Just like we thought, boss. No insulation in the attic. Perfect. Now go wild and waste some wattage. The Mitchell House. A house like many others. Except this one's under attack by Energy Hogs. They show up anywhere energy's being wasted. Talk to me, Hogs. The washer. It's not Energy Star rated. Outstanding. What about the thermostat? Not programmable. I repeat, not programmable. Looks like we're living high on the hog. <laughs> Only one person has the power to get rid of energy hogs. You. Hold on.
on! Someone's home! Andy's got energy-efficient light bulbs! <laughs> to find out how you can fight energy hogs, log on to energyhog.org. You'll find fun games and lots of tips on making your home more energy-efficient. Now he's installing Energy Star appliances! Not Energy Star! That's it! Get out of there! I'll get you, energyhog.org! Hey! Wait for me! Brought to you by the Alliance to Save Energy, the Department of Energy, and the Ad Council. Story of illusion Cause I win some and I lose some But sometimes I can't confuse them Yeah, even though I had been spoken I thought what I said was open And that you would understand Where I was coming from I can't find Where it is that I went wrong Seems to me Sometimes that all I do is always wrong That all I do is always wrong And I don't often play my cards right But when I do then I just might find I fold Before I play my cards the whole way through and it so happens that I also second guess myself Resulting in a mess that I can't fix with anybody's help I can't find where it is that I went from Seems to me sometimes that all I do is always wrong by Vinny Rotino. That was after Tony Gwynn Jr. had tied the game in the bottom of the ninth with an RBI triple for the Brewers against his dad's former team. The Mets shut out the Marlins 13 to nothing. John Main goes seven and two thirds, no hit innings before giving up a scratch hit to Paul Hoover. The Mets finish off the shutout and pull back into a first place tie with the Phillies who lose to the Nationals four to two at Citizens Bank Park. Cubs shut out the Reds today, 4-0 in Cincinnati. Checking the playoff teams in the American League, the Red Sox lead the Twins 6-4 in the 7th. The Yankees lead the Orioles 11-9 in the 5th. Royals lead the Indians 3-2 in the 6th. And the Angels beat the Athletics in Oakland 3-2. At the President's Cup, the U.S. leads the Internationals 14.5, 7.5. Sports Center, every 20 minutes, ESPN Radio. Hey, it's Jaws. This season, football is going to be a little bit different, better than ever before. It's not just because I'll be in the booth calling the game. It's because with a DLP HD TV, you'll be seeing every play in eye-popping high definition without all the motion blur. I got my nickname Jaws because I'm a big talker. But I'll tell you, DLP HD TV isn't just a bunch of talk. It's amazing. It's the mirrors. DLP, HDTV, millions of tiny mirrors take the motion blur out of sports action.
This is game night. Seven nights a week. At the 10, at the 5, at the 52 weeks a year. 15 years and counting. 81 for Kobe. And a oh, it's a it's our world champion. Every night is game night on ESPN Radio. Tonight's guests on game night will appear via the OnStar hotline, sponsored by OnStar. If you're in a collision, OnStar receives a signal and can contact you to make sure you receive the help you need. Find out more at OnStar.com. So, America, I'm going to let you ponder a little question today. Who would you rather be? The head coach of either... Oklahoma, Oregon, <laughs> Texas, Rutgers, Clemson, Penn State, Alabama, WVU, or Freddie Coleman, who roots for the Mets and is banking on the Washington Nationals to help his team not collapse, a bigger collapse than the Boston Red Sox, a bigger really? collapse than anything. It would be the biggest collapse in baseball history, Freddie Coleman, if we're sitting here mm -hmm. next Saturday, game night on ESPN Radio. I'm Andy Gresh. Okay. And we're sitting here, and the New York Metropolitans are not in the playoffs. It would be the biggest collapse in baseball history, and sadly, I'd have to wait a week to repeat. Oh, well, also, too, it would be nobody else's fault but the New York Mets. Very you, true. You have a seven-game lead with 17 games remaining. There's no way that you should lose that lead. If you go 1-5 and five against the Washington Nationals, you have no business being in the playoffs. That being said, come on, Nationals, please, please, do a brother a solid tomorrow. I, either way, uh, so, it's, it's, so it's America, going to be a lot of fun. America has answered. Yes. We'd rather be one of the eight college coaches whose team was ranked and lost please. today or yesterday please. as opposed to Freddie Coleman rooting for the Washington Nationals. Here's the deal with that. And obviously John Maine today, who took a no-hitter to the eighth inning. Hey, and, and I'm watching the game with my wife. Big performance. I know. I'm watching the game with my wife. And Denise goes, oh, honey, he's got a chance of no-hitter. I go, not a snowball <laughs> chance in, in blazes, honey. She goes, why? I said, honey, there are certain things that are going to happen. Death, taxes, flavor flavor. So for some reason, getting a show on BH1. And no one will throw a no hitter <laughs> in a Mets uniform. Now Met pitchers will leave and throw no hitters for other people. Tom Seaver, Doc Gooden, the way that it is. But I said I, I, I'm just glad that they're up eight nothing. I'm just glad that they are putting it to the Florida Marlins. And then what happens later on with the Phillies and the Nationals, I'll have to live with. I'm just glad that a the bullpen will they can't screw this up and B, the offense came around for one day, even if it's only for one day. He's Freddie Coleman. I'm Andy Gresh. Game night on ESPN Radio. It's delivered by the new AT&T. We'll get to the upsets in college football in about four minutes. But, Freddie, yeah. you got a great pitching performance, mm -hmm. and you got some hitting. We have Trouble T. Roy here at ESPN Radio. Look at you. But you have Lasting's M. Rapper guy. <laughs> Change up, hit in the air, deep to left field, going back is Linden to the warning track, to the wall, it's gone! Into the Marlins bullpen, a two-run homer for Lasting's Village. That just goes to show you how much of a cracker I am that I couldn't come up with anything better than Lasting's M rapper guy. Lasting's M rapper guy. Mm -hmm. F-A-M the call now. Why, why a brother got to be a rapper? Oh, uh, 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 really? Hey, Freddie. I couldn't resist. You know why? Because you, you my, my, my space tells me so. <laughs> how about that? Because... Because his MySpace page says he's a rapper. Yeah, he, no, he's something I, anyway. I'd rather him be a baseball player. That's right. I'd keep your day job lasting Village, as best if you're hitting two-run home runs. I love what John Maine said. And for the first time, somebody said it as they beat Florida 13 to nothing today. He basically said, we weren't going to lose today. I don't expect Willie Randolph to say that, but I expect somebody on that team. Prime example, I'll, I'll never forget this article. When the Minnesota Twins won their first world championship, they were playing game seven. Mm -hmm. And they said, um, Gagne, their third baseman, not Greg Gagne, what's his 